Hello and welcome to this morning's play at the Online Darts Live League. It is the sequel in 2021. It is phase two. So let's go down to the board to see our first two combatants. Two of the best players from phase one, of course, in Martin Adams and Kevin Burness. Really looking forward to this game because these two had a great time in phase one. Eight weeks of competition. And both of them picked up a weekly title. But in the case of Kevin Vaness, he picked up a couple of them. He was the only player to win two back-to-back. -back. There was one other player who did pick up two weekly titles in Chaz Barstow, but he did them weeks apart. But this man had a very successful fortnight in the middle of Phase 1. But this is Phase 2, and things have progressed. We had a curtain raiser on Saturday night, which was... The Sporty Stuff TV trophy, which was won by Richie Burnett. And Adams himself, who played in that curtain raiser, finished in third position behind Robert Thornton and the eventual winner. One of the differences you can see with Phase 2, because of the relaxing of some COVID restrictions, is that we now have a referee in the room, which, for me, takes a little bit of pressure off the players. Now they can just focus on what they're hitting, as opposed to fo focusing on what they have to add up as well and communicate to our scorers. So it's something that Martin Adams will know a little bit about because our referee Owen Binks was here on Saturday. But for Kevin Burness, it will feel just a little bit different. Our players just having nine practice starts before we start. All games, of course, in our campaign today will be best of seven legs. Straight start. Apologise that we seem to have lost our picture from one of the cameras, so we'll stay on this one for now. But we do have Martin Adams and Kevin Burness today for your darting entertainment. 15 matches, of course, today, where our six Game players will legs. all play five each. Game on. Robert Thornton will join us today. James Richardson, another weekly winner, will join us, as will Richie Burnett, Saturday's champion, and another prolific Group A stall.
Hello again, and apologies for that short intermission into this first game of the day, but we have rectified that camera now, so let's go back down to the playing area where Martin and Kevin are about to restart the game after a couple of visits each. Just getting themselves back in the groove after that unexpected delay. But Martin and Kevin will be expectant today when it comes to the start of phase two. Like I mentioned at the start of the show, very prolific in phase one. Martin Adams played a lot of matches. Kevin, not as many, but it has to be said that after coming off the tour at the end of last year, Kevin Burness has started to build a little bit of confidence. So maybe he's someone we could watch out for by the end of 2021 to maybe get himself back onto the tour. So the match is going to be restarted. And restarted perfectly by Martin Adams. A somewhat ironic smile there from Kevin Finesse. And all he can do is smile sometimes. Well, I think both of them had a little bit of a smile on the face the last time they met, which was back in week four. Kevin Burness and Martin had very similar averages in that best of seven match, which they played. And both of them played brilliantly. 96.76 average, 95.97 average for Martin, but the 96.76 was good enough for Burness to win four legs to three. 40% on his doubles in that match as well. So the average could have been a little bit better. But he's still got the two points, which is key. 140. And in this group, early points are going to be vital. Of course, they will play today, tomorrow, and on Wednesday. It's the same format as phase one. That is a missed single. That is not a missed single. This is a shot at tops. 20. And a wired Kevin shot at tops. That would have been for a 12. This is for a 12. Oh, what a way to start the day. Oh, we're just ramping things up at the start of play. And maybe it's a good thing for Kevin Maness that that first leg of the day was restarted. Fantastic first leg. So let's get straight into leg two to see what they can dish up here. Look at that. The smile of Wolfie. He realizes that he really took it to Baness. But it wasn't enough. Yes, in this group today, we have... Adams, Burness, Thornton, Richardson, Burnett, and Monk. I'm going to have to be careful with Burness and Burnett today. But what we have with Adams is a weekly winner. With Burness, we have a two-time weekly winner. We have Thornton, who has won a Group A and comes second in the Saturday special just gone. James Richardson, a weekly winner. Burnett, prolific and, of course, Saturday's champion. And Aaron Monk, who has been excellent at different points, but maybe Aaron Monk of the six is the underachiever of the six. He probably doesn't want me to say that, but the fact of the matter is, it is the case. Coming back down to earth with that 26 there, Kevin Burness. What we saw on Saturday night with the games like Adams versus Sherrick and Thornton versus Burnett was just a sign of a little bit of ring rust, maybe. Some low averages, but some very good games. But by the time we got to the semi-finals, things did ramp up a bit. Highest average of the night came from this man, Martin Adams. But it was a losing average of 101.33. Kevin, you require 138. Oh, this is chicken feed compared to a 161. 
Almost got the second treble 19 for a shot at double 12. 106. I think we may oh, start to see, as this week progresses, an element of comfort for the players, knowing that they've got someone else in the room to help them with the mathematics. Just takes a little bit of pressure away. 94. It's something that a lot of players Getting might not be used to, 32. because over the last 12 months, they've been having to do it themselves. Well, Benes, a double eight. Misses twice. Martin, you require 50. Adams missed at tops to take leg one. Benes misses three for 32 to take leg two. Game and the steal seven. is reciprocated as Martin Adams takes the second leg in this contest. I get the feeling we're going to have a lot of close games today. We are scheduled to be on the air, of course, until about two o'clock British time. But I think we might go past that because some of these games the are going to be tight. Martin to throw third. Game on. <coughs> we were, of course, live on Sporty Stuff TV on Saturday night, and we will be live on Sporty Stuff TV again on Thursday, Friday, oh, and Saturday night 80. for our evening sessions. And during the day, you can catch us at the Online Darts YouTube channel, and, of course, you can see us 100. via the stream services of your favourite bookmaker. But as of this morning, if you want to follow all of the results on Twitter, please follow at Darts Live League, a new account. So if you're at work and you're not able to watch and you want to keep up with the results, 41. follow that account or indeed the hashtag of OD Live League. If you're more of a Facebooker, follow Online Darts Live League and all of the information will be there at hand. 140. Really excited for this week because the weekly winner is really going to have to graft for the title. And of course, the format has changed. 100. It really does mean something to get in the top echelons of the league on Saturday night because if you win Group A, 40. you will progress to Saturday night's finals for the week. If you get in the top two of Group B or C, you will also get into Saturday night's finals. But the finals has changed. The format has changed. 100. The players will be split into two groups. And then, of course, if you find yourself in the top three by the end of the week, you will go to the Champions Week in week five. More on that a little bit later. But that's another missed single for Martin. He's robbing himself of shots at doubles. 40. And it's twice now he's missed Kevin a single 20. And the last time he did that, Kevin Benes took a 161. That's a good approach. Martin, you require 40. But Martin with three at tops. You fancy there's only one result. Double ten. Thirty. Not able to find it, and Benes is getting Kevin a Europe little bit fortunate here. Tops it is for him. Game Break of throw, and he's left. taking Kevin his Bowen. chances when he's playing in the the odd numbered legs. As I, as I just scramble my brain there, because this game has been very, very good so far to start things off. Mid nineties averages for both, and it's Benes who takes the lead again. Kevin to throw third. Game on. One hundred and twenty. Benes knows nothing about being here and not being successful. Of course, the two weeks that he did play it, he wound up with his hand raised to the ceiling. One being the winner but you get the feeling with the players that he's up against in this group and potentially by the end of the week he's going to have to play it just a little bit better Adams sporting that charity shirt 
And over the course of the next few days, expect him to hit a lot of 180s and sport different charity shirts. Today, it's the blue, white, and black for prostate cancer. And if he hits this nine data, reverberations will be felt over the internet for the coming days. Come on, Martin. Not to be. The Adams average is over 102. It feels that good. Sometimes you see an average and you think it's a little misleading. Well, not on this occasion. This feels and looks very good. It could have been a lot better. And there's another missed single. Oh, I, Here's me looking at the wrong number. It is Monday morning. And I've made a couple of mistakes already, so I'll hold my hands up and say that that was my bad. I thought he was going for a single nine, but he did get the 14, he did get the double 16, and it's now 2-2. Two -two. Fifth leg, it's Martin to throw third. Game on. So at the end of leg four, we've got two players on doubles percentages of around 40%. And quizzically... The average that Benes had in his last match against Adams, it's exactly the same. 96-76. Adams over 101. And if he can maintain that today, I don't think anybody's going to beat him. In the table, anyway. Just seems to be on it this morning. He showed a little bit of... Ring rust, like I say, on Saturday night. He had a couple of dodgy legs against Fallon Sherrick in his first match on Saturday. 60. But it was still good enough to win 4-0 with a 76 average in game one. He then graduated to an 88 average against Aaron Monk in a 4-3 win. But then after that, he really did kick into gear. 89. It's Kevin who has the longer shift today. He plays in match one and in match 15, where he will finish his day against Richie Burnett. Martin will finish his campaign against Robert Thornton in match 14. It is the single 14 this time, and he gets it to set up tops, a guaranteed shot at it. Martin, you require 40. Tops for 3-2 then. And he's starting to make his presence felt. Game shot. Very good indeed. A 14 data is an average of around 107. So that takes his overall average well above 103 now. This is a very strong start. And a message is being sent to the rest of the field in Group A on Monday morning. It's Kevin to throw first. Game on. Well, wherever you are tuning in from, because I'm not taking for granted that all of our viewers are from the United Kingdom, or indeed from Europe. We do have some regulars who tune in from the United States, from Australia, and of course other parts of the globe. One hundred. Some of you might be back to work today, some of you might be having a day off after what was a massive weekend of sport, not just... PGA Championship Golf, Premier League Football, of course, some American sports going into their playoffs. I sincerely hope that your teams did well over the weekend. And now it may be time for you to support Wrong. your individual darting heroes, whether it's today during the Online Darts Live League or indeed in the final week of the Premier League, which is beginning tonight in Milton Keynes. We do, of course, in this group, have someone who has participated in the Premier League in Robert Thornton. 26. Kevin, you Looks like this one is going to a lost leg decider. Another one of those for double 10. 120. Well, that's what you call a professional miss. Because the last thing you want to be stuck on is double five.
140. You could say that's a little bit of pressure. Little step to the left. No score. And he has offered Martin Adams one bonus shot at finishing the match right here. The match started with a very big 1-6-1 one, one out. It's not going to finish with a 1-3-5. But he has to hit it this time. Kevin, you require 20. Double 10, or you're in trouble. Okay, Gets it. And it's amazing how many times that happens when a dart player has got a huge lead. He had the 140 chance, then he missed the next visit, but when he is pushed, when someone's on the double, he finds it. Seventh and final leg, it's Martin to throw first. Game on. I have to be honest, I'm still getting used to the fact that there's a referee in the room. It's the smallest things in life these days, isn't it? And what we're trying to do here at the Online Darts Live League is make this an evolving product. We started with a game involving myself and Mark Webster over 12 months ago from our own practice rooms with webcams. Now we have this product here and we will not stop there. We will continually evolve to try and bring you the product that you want to watch. One what we want here is a seventh leg befitting this match. It's been excellent. 96 average for Benes, 100 for Adams. And that one is a bit of a slip, so the advantage has slipped back towards the Northern Irishman. Fifty-seven. Ever since Kevin hit that one-six-one, it seems like Martin has been the person with the better opportunities. He's already had one chance to win the match on a one-three-five, and he couldn't get a shot at a double. So Benes is still in command. How much he wants the 140. 100. You know if you leave 64, you're going to get a shot for the match. But with the 104, just a bit more complicated. And he's going to be under immense pressure. What a time to hit a maximum. The last opportunity for a maximum in the match, and he blasts it in there. Now Benes has to hit this. And he can't. Wolfie, who has had eight shots at a double in this match, 56. is Not about to get 50. shots nine and ten if he needs it. Double 16. He needs the second shot. And he's not able to find it himself. Kevin, you require 48. Well, Kevin Benes, if he walks away from this match for two points, will consider himself a little bit fortunate. Double 10 doesn't come to the rescue this time, and they've both mismatched darts. Martin, you require what a dramatic first match for a Monday morning. I'm not sure I can take it. Well, Martin Adams takes the two points and he finishes the match with a 19 dart leg. It just goes to show that you don't just need big 11 darters and 12 darters to finish a match and get the drama. Because as you can see, with 96 average and a 92 for Kevin, it has been an excellent start on Monday morning. So let's go into match two. Next, we've got Robert Thornton and James Richardson. That one should deliver as well.
preview of the Online Darts Live League. Match number two about to begin. James Richardson and Robert Thornton are about to get underway. This one should be just as good as match one. Well, we hope so because we saw five maximums from Martin Adams and we saw none from Kevin Burness, but he did have his chances to win that match. Unfortunately for him, he was not able to snag the two points. Who is going to get the two points in this one, you might think? Well, they have played each other on a few occasions, these two, but they haven't played each other here. 53-year-old from Southwest Scotland throwing a 26-gram Red Dragon dart up against the 47-year-old from Northamptonshire. 25-gram dart for James, so there's a little bit of heavy tungsten being tossed in this one. Should be a very good match, I feel. What's really interesting for me is that when you look at the head-to-head -head records of certain people, some things just crop up okay, and make you think. Game on. James Richardson and Robert Thornton have played each other eight times. And Robert has won five of their meetings, but he has not beaten James since 2018. Now, the likelihood is that he doesn't remember that. Because they play so many players in so many different places, usually, that they just forget about the defeat really quickly, unless it's a memorable one, of course, and then move on from there. But they have been served a bit of a warning by Martin Adams, who, like I said, took five maximums in that first match, which is some feat in a best-of-seven match. Very healthy average of around 96, which is an excellent start to a campaign. So these two will recognize that if they're going to have a chance of topping today's table, they're going to have to do a very, very good job of being on their game. Cuts the score down to 82. A decent position because Robert, who almost lives in the region of double top in a darts match, should be getting a shot at it if he misses the ball. 25 is the requisite half. Well, he didn't want that. He's not going to get a shot at tops. He's going to have a shot at the Ashdown. Double three. That has turned out to be a bit of a disaster, that visit. Double 19. Fifty-seven. And now can Robert, Robert you require three. negotiate the next door neighbour of tops? Well, that is a good single. No score. Early hard break Game for Robert Thornton. It wasn't meant to be like this. He can't believe he hit that 51 to leave double three. Through the posts, James. Just like that. Well, if that was an AFL or Aussie Rules referee, just looking at those two posts, he would have gone like that with two fingers because that was 38 points right through the posts and it is an early break for James Richardson. Second leg, it's James to throw first. Game on. There were times on Saturday night where Robert was getting a little bit cheesed off with how things were panning out and his grimace that we sometimes see was starting to grace his face. I'm not surprised if he was a bit cheesed off in that first leg. I was flabbergasted to see that he was the second longest odds to win on Saturday night. Well, he almost... He have a giant two fingers up to the old bookies there because he came very close. He lost out to Richie Burnett, who beat him twice on Saturday night. 84. I'm sure Richardson was tuning in to see what his competition was going to be like this Monday morning. 
And after getting some fortune and getting multiple chances for that first leg, he could double his lead right here. Two double tops. I just don't understand that. I think that's too courageous to put it a nice way. But one tops. And double ten. And the memories of the first leg are almost forgotten now. Because sometimes when you have that disastrous first leg where you've missed multiple chances, you just want to rectify it immediately. That's exactly what Robert has just done. So let's go into leg three. And we're back on throw now. Game on. Yeah, some of the meetings between these two in uh, eight different matches they played in players championships UK Open qualifiers 100 they've played each other in three qualifiers for European tour events and this is where it gets really interesting because when they play each other in qualifiers James Richardson wins them all he's won in a qualifier for the Gibraltar Darts Trophy, the German Darts Open, and the European Darts Grand Prix. But all of Robert's victories have come in ranking matches. 60. Biggest of which was at the Players' Championship Finals back in 2017. And that was in round one. Won by Robert by six legs to five. 100. As we're playing the first game of the day, we can give you an insight into what these players did in phase one. We saw the, the most maximums from one player playing today in phase one from Martin Adams, but he did play more games than anybody else. He got 87 180s. He's already got five in phase two. Double top. And Thornton is just over the top of that as Richardson has another crack at a 95 checkout. Same result on the treble. Game Different result the on the double. Game so keep leaving yourself double 19, James Richardson, because he's getting very good at it. Last time he needed two visits to negotiate it after a few misses. This time, just a little bit sharper as he gets it on number two dot at double 19. But he's broken again. Look at Robert Thornton in the background. He hates having his throw broken. It's happened to him twice already. Just looking at the win percentages through phase one. 66. Thornton, who played 33 games in phase one, had a win percentage of 55.6%, which you would think would be pretty high, considering the number. But the majority of the players playing today had better win percentages than him. 62% for Vaness. 57 for James Richardson, so marginally better than Robert. Burnett with 62. And that was the best one. Is Robert about to break back again? Very rarely do you see a match. Where there's seven breaks of throw, but that one is still possible. But that streak might be about to be broken because of that lovely setup from James Richardson. Single one for double top. Multiple chances missed once more, just like leg one. And he is broken. Robert Thornton just keeping that streak alive. And when James was putting himself on 41, you felt that the first hold of throw was about to come. Well, we were all wrong. As Robert Thornton gets a fourth consecutive break, and he now throws first in like five. Game on. Let's have a look at the high checkouts of these players through phase one then. Aaron Monk got himself a 170. 
He was the only person to do so. Which I think is quite surprising. James's biggest finish was 141. And that's very appropriate because that was on the back of a nine daughter. The only nine daughter that we did get in phase one. And when he got that, it was on a Monday. So, come on, James. 100. Get another one. Robert Thornton's biggest finish in phase one was 125. I get the feeling that is going to change over the course of the next few days. If indeed we do need to separate these players at some point in the table and can't do so on points, we will, of course, look at their leg difference. And if the leg difference is the same and we need to split them on the daily table, we'll do so by looking at the head-to-head -head result. 140. As nice as it is to get the daily table, of course, you want to be at the top of the Group A table at the end of Wednesday. That's the most important thing this week. But the breaks, they just keep it coming. Or do they? Robert, you require 72. There have been plenty of costly misses so far today. This is now the biggest shot in this match. Game and it's taken on Robert his favourite double. Robert Thornton finally opens up a can of holding a leg of darts. And there it is, 3-2 to him. But he has two chances now to get himself his first two points of the day. Will it be against the throw in leg six? Game on. So it's pretty simple. James Richardson hasn't held his throw in this match. And he needs to do so now. Otherwise, he will lose the match. I can confirm that we will have these six players for the next three mornings in Group A. But as for the players who do not progress through this group, or the player that doesn't progress through this group, The places two and three will go to Thursday and Friday night and will be joined in Group B by Chaz Barstow, the Week 8 and Week 2 champion of Phase 1. Colin Monk Sr. will return. I know a lot of people will be looking forward to that. And the Week 1 champion from Phase 1, Scott Marsh, will return too. So that is going to be a stacked group, whoever is in that one. But places four, five, and six 100. from the table after Wednesday, they will be joined by Jamie Kelling, Matthew Dennant, and Diogo Portella. Originally, that was Reese Robinson, but he is no longer able to play, so Diogo has stepped in. Could it be a hold of throw for James Richardson? 38. Oh, this will be some way to get your first two points of the day. Wouldn't be the biggest finish of the day. James just needs to close this out. And he does. He's just looking at the dart there above tops to see if he was going to rattle it to smash its way into the red bit. He didn't need it in the end, but two darts takes him to his third leg and his first hold as we go into leg seven to decide who gets the Season points. Final leg, it's Roberts to throw first. Game on. So from having four breaks of throw, we've had two holds in a row now. 58. So it's been a match of symmetry. Two breaks each, one hold each. And now it's a one-leg shootout for the first two points. Before we are joined by the always exciting Richie Burnett and the always unpredictable Aaron Monk, I get the feeling that that match could be very exciting to watch. And maybe it's a good thing that they're playing early. As the pressure mounts with those two going at it, I get the feeling that things will get a bit more animated. 
Robert's got to try and get something big here. I know he's missed that treble 19, but that's a beautiful recovery from the Thorn to give himself an advantage of 50. And just as James is starting to ramp up his pace, Robert is finding enough to leave double 18 for the match if James does not find this. Four 19s. There's three. Four. But no bullseye. Robert, you require 36. Double 18. Double nine. Oh, a really bad dart at double nine, unfortunately for Robert. James, you require and James, who has already missed a match dart at the bull, will not believe that he is back at the board. Double top. Robert had his hand on the table, thinking that the match was over. He was wrong. Double four. Finds it. Oh, the hands go up as if to apologise for winning that one. I don't like to see players apologising, but I think that was more to do with relief. I tell you what, that is a really key two points for Robert. And those games are going to be crucial for the chances of people getting through this group. As you can see, both averages above 90 again. So the quality has been there this morning. Will it continue as we welcome Richie Burnett and Aaron Monk next? Hello again, and similar patterns have been followed in the first couple of matches where the person on the left-hand side of the draw has had the most 180s, and the left-hand sided person on the draw has won the match by four legs to three, and the highest finish has gone to the right. Will this continue in match number three as we see two of the most unpredictable characters in the game? First and foremost, we welcome back to the Online Darts Live League after about a 36-hour break since picking up the Sporty Stuff TV trophy on Saturday night, or to be more accurate, Sunday morning. But the man from Andover, the 31-year-old now, 
who participated in that curtain raiser on Saturday night, but didn't make the semi-finals. He was under par on Saturday night. So maybe now would be a good time to try and bolster his chances in a group A where Aaron will feel very comfortable because he won not one, but two group A's in phase one, in week one and week eight. If he can make it a third, he can have a crack at another finals group to possibly pick up a first weekly title because that's what was missing in phase one for Aaron. He had some class displays. A high average of 108.95, which is phenomenal stuff. He banked 41 maximums in 40 matches, so averaging just over one maximum a match for Aaron, for me, is under par. He should be scoring more than that. But there were some really, really good displays, but too often mixed with some that he would want to forget. The only person to have a better average than him in a phase one match was Richie Burnett. He had 109.31 when playing Robert Thornton in week two. Everybody in this field has registered an average of over 102. And that says a lot about how stacked this first group of phase two is. It's going to be a fair bit of gesticulating and pausing when Richie's around. I was really curious to speak to Fallon Sherrick on Saturday who said that it was really interesting playing Richie Burnett for the very first time because of the way that his body moves, not just when he's throwing, but after he's thrown. And there's more evidence of that proclivity to hit 180s. Richie Burnett. And what it's done is given him a really oh, doable oh. chance to take the first leg here on Richie throw. Tops for him to start a really, really tidy looking match. Now, both players in both matches so far have averaged over 90. This first leg in 17 is just a shade under 89. So we expect things to improve from here, but that doesn't detract from how good that leg was. Same colour dart shirt for Richie today than what he played in on Saturday night. So maybe he's getting a little superstitious. I wouldn't blame him for that, but it's a very fetching looking dart shirt. Nice shade of green, a little bit of red, white and black trim. And unquestionably Welsh on the back with that fierce looking dragon. 100. I think if there was going to be a signature colour for Aaron Monk, who you see just in practice polos and smart polo shirts these days, he's not really one for the dart shirt. But I'd say a nice sky blue because that's the colour of his home county, Hampshire. At least that's what they used to play in in the old days when Hampshire had that ridiculously strong A team which involved his dad, Colin, Andy Jenkins, James Wade, Paul Hogan and many more. A lot of really good social media traffic over the course of the weekend. Talking about the evolution of the Online Darts Live League and how it's giving these players purpose. They will be challenged to our action later in the year. 82. And these players will be going. Aaron, you require 84. 14 for Bull, it has to be. But he gets the treble. He does not get the double 11. Has to be 19s first, surely. He could go 25 first. 
but 19s is the sensible play. And that one is so far south of the 60, it probably would have hit the quad on a quad board. No need for a quad when you need the double at double 11. And that, it, it does hit on the Adrian Lewis double, as I like to call it, because that's what he hit to win his first world title. This one is tied up at one leg all, and it looks like we might have another tight match on our hands. I'd like to take this moment just to thank everybody for sending me some well wishes after my elbow surgery, which took place two weeks ago. Things are healing very nicely, but it's a bit tingly in the elbow department in the last week or so. Recovery will take another few weeks, and then another operation is scheduled for later in the year, which will take even longer to recover from. So in the meantime, I have to watch these guys play it. And I get a lot of enjoyment from that, bringing you these games through the microphone. But at some point, 100. I'd like to be doing what they're doing. And I know for a fact that none of these players are taking for granted their place in this group. Especially now that things have changed prize money-wise. Like £2,000 made its way to the bank account of Richie Burnett over the weekend by winning... The curtain raiser on Sunday morning. If he can make his way to the champions group in week five. And bank the number one spot in that group. It would be a cool £5,000 for the winner. Now, how do you get there, you might ask? Well, first and foremost, you have to get through this group. And if you do get through this group, or potentially groups B or C this week, get into the weekly finals. You've got to be in the top three in the weekly finals to qualify for Champions Week. And then you've got to get to the final via the same means in Champions Week. So just getting there, that is what you have to do. For more information on... All of that, please visit the Twitter and Facebook pages of Online Darts. Perfect first dart. Perfect second. A well-thrown third, but it does not find the target. Now, Aaron knows a fair amount about an 84 checkout so far in this match. The last time he was on it, he missed it. But he doesn't miss it this time, and the first sign of gumption from the man from Andover, and I expected there to be a little bit of this today, and I don't mind that whatsoever, especially when there's a referee in the room. He can just focus on what he's got to do instead of adding things up. Could be some great legs ahead. Is it also a sign that Aaron knows how strong this group is? Is it also a sign that someone like Aaron really, really wants to win Champions Week and bag that £5,000. Well, Aaron, you got to get there first. You've got to negotiate this match, the next match, one match at a time. I know it's a cliche. 97. But you could say he's a specialist in Group A. He's played in Group A twice. He has not been defeated in getting the Group A title when he's played in it. He's lost matches. But he's not failed to get through Group A. And he will expect to get through this group, even with this company. As you can see from one of our camera shots, we have an exclusion zone on the floor now. Beautifully decked out in Pittsburgh Steelers colours. No, I didn't request that. Black and yellow, so you see Richie standing outside of the yellow zone, which is owned by Aaron when he's throwing. And if I were Aaron, I'd stay well back 
on Richie's throne because that back leg can Wrong. kick out a little bit. Aaron, you require 120. Could be 3 1 in a matter of seconds. The flight flies to the floor, but unfortunately for Aaron, he's only able to cut his score in half. Triple 19 for a shot at double 12. But he goes for the 45 option instead and misses it. Heavy exhalation there from Richie and a lot of shaking the head. 66 remain. 65. Gets the next door treble. But Aaron looking for a 17 data of his own. Finds it in the left portion to go 3-1 up on the fancied Richie Bennett after winning on Saturday night. I'm sure there were a lot of you out there thinking that maybe Richie would be the favourite in this group. Well, in this match, he's no longer the favourite because he's 3-1 down. Fifth leg, it's Richie to throw first. Game on. You do, of course, have the option of Having a little flutter on some of these 99. games. And you may be watching via the stream services of your favourite bookmaker. But if you are choosing to have a bit of a flutter today, please do so in a responsible manner. Remember that it is for 18 plus only. And begambleaware.org for more information on that. You can have a go at the winners of matches, most 180s, and all sorts of different things. But please... If the fun does stop, then stop yourself. 140. Burnett with a lovely answer in that previous visit to try and make Aaron think. 58. Burnett spending a lot of time with Robert Thornton over the last few weeks. They've been involved in some Groups together. 97. Richie, you require 100. Guarantee you when they're having a bit of banter, you might need subtitles. They would definitely go into their very strong dialects, which I absolutely love to hear. Two of the funniest people I've come across in my career. Especially Richie. 60. Richie, you require 104. He's looking for 104 here to try and stay in the match, to deny Aaron his first chance to win the match. He can't believe that that one has careered into the single one. Can't recover with the treble 17. Can Aaron close it out in style? Well, there's your answer. A big, slim five stops that possibility. But the next two dots are perfect. And he leaves himself in double 11 again. Don't leave him a shot, Richie. 48. Options. Double 16 option is taken. But he's not able to hit it, and that could signal the end of this match. Game over, and Aaron Monk Aaron is the Monk. first person to get a win today. That is not four legs to three. Really interesting game, that, because Richie Burnett started by taking the first leg, but the next four go the way of Aaron Monk, and there you see he has got the first two points of his day. He joins Robert Thornton, and he joins Martin Adams on that point. We're going to move into game number four now, where we will see Kevin Burness and Robert Thornton for the second time. Can they get their first points of the day in the case of Kevin, or will it be Robert Thornton getting four?
Hello and welcome back. It's game number four about to start with Kevin Benes taking on Robert Thornton. And Robert Thornton, who picked up a very valuable two points against James Richardson in his first game, will now go head-to-head -head with Kevin to try and make his way to four. Could he be the first person to get there? Well, let's go down there and find out. Benes, who had his chances against Wolfie Adams in that first game of the day. It wasn't a poor performance from Kevin by any means. Average of 92. But only 25% of his doubles does tell the story. As for Robert, 91 for him in his first match in picking up the two points against Ruthless Richardson. And 31% on his doubles in that match. That proved to be the clincher as James struggled on the outer ring on the hole and lost the match after missing key shots at the end. First leg, it's Kevin to throw first. Game on. The man who is nicknamed Iron Man does have it monogrammed on his stems as well. Just a bit of a reset at the start of this match. That one has found a small 20, but it came out of the hand a little bit flat. 100. Just a sign of experience there from the former Tom Kirby Memorial Champion. Seen some great names on that trophy. And named after a fine guy too. Just don't get players like Tom Kirby anymore. Wearing a normal shirt. 100. Sometimes sticking on a tie. And just clattering that dartboard with a big fat barrel. You don't see those old school actions anymore as well. Where it's all hand-eye coordination. It's not... The perfect technique that you get from Kevin Vanessa. here. Those unconventional actions that you used to get in the 80s and 90s. You just don't see as many of them anymore. 140. Kevin, you require and for me, that's one of the reasons why the standard has gone up. Because the biomechanics of the players is on the whole much improved. 80. Robert, you're he got a 1-6-1 in the first leg of his last match. Didn't get it this time. Robert's going to try and leave tops. And does a wonderful job of doing that. With 78 left. He's going to go traditionally for the 54. A lot of people might have thought that the double 19 was the shot there. Because it's a bigger section. And Robert Thornton seems to be well-versed in the art of breaking the throw today because he has done it many, many times so far. And he started this match with another break of throw. So the impetus is for the Scotsman, who seems to be on form. If you look at the way he performed in Phase 1, Robert in Week 2, who won Group A... Started somewhat slowly on Monday and then gradually improved. And then he had a perfect day on Wednesday. And that's what got him through as the winner of Group A. I think he knows from experience that he can't afford that slow start with this group. Easy three. Seems to be a bit more sharp today. And that might have something to do with how many games he played on Saturday. I really narrowly missed out on that Sporty Stuff TV trophy. 96. Just chatting with some of the players who have not seen a great deal of action over the last few months, but have participated in the Online Darts Live League. 97. Robert, you're the key to success for most of them is just to keep playing, to find more matches. You think that is the case for someone like Robert, who has not only played in this format, but he has, of course, played at Super Series 3, where he banked a lot of money. Robert, you require 74. Double 16. Forty-two. You'll be wondering how that didn't go in. If that was thrown one iota harder... 
That was in the 32. One shot, a double. And that double is tops. 46. And Ironman does Rob, not find his way to the hot spot. Double 16 again, and he Thornton is in there to double his lead Robert to 2-0. So we can see patterns starting to occur. Missed doubles from Kevin, not only in his first match, but one here. And the chances are going Robert's way, and he is taking him 2-0 up. So I like it's Kevin to throw first. Game on. You see that shirt that Kevin is wearing? Very bright blue colour, trimmed with orange. Designed by our board sponsor, Winmo. And we do thank 34. the Winmo company for the Blade 5 dart board that is being used throughout the Online Darts Live League. And we also thank our other sponsors. As we see another slip dart from Kevin Vaness. That's the second one we've seen in this match. 72. Now, one of the things that plagued players last year when playing in the Online Darts Live League was... The climate in the UK, as it got hotter through the summer, it was more difficult for the players to play at home because some of their houses were not air-conditioned. They didn't have a great deal of ventilation, so they were playing in very hot environments, especially one of our weekly champions from Phase 1, Jared Cole, who played in his conservatory somehow. But this is a temperature-controlled room. And it's primed for playing good darts. So we shouldn't really be getting much in the way of perspiration. 137. Robert, you require 100. On the hand or on the brow. 147's possible. Still possible. Ooh, that's a beauty. No 15 reds, no 15 blacks, and of course all the colours. That just needed three different colours on the dartboard. A red, a green, then another red. Fantastic shot. Not the biggest of the day, but one of the key shots as Robert Thornton will now try to close it 4 0. Game on. And that is his biggest finish since playing here this year. His previous best of 125 has been taken within two matches. I think I remember saying earlier that that 125 finish of his in phase one. Would not stand for long. Well, he's proven me right. And it's a somewhat traditional way for going for 147 these days. A lot of players really do prefer to go for 19s first to give themselves options with darts two, then three. You get the 57, you leave 90. You go tops for bull. Treble 18 for double 18. Thornton's got the bit between his teeth in this match, averaging a cool 104. One hundred. That average has come down in the last couple of visits. You won't care one jot about that because he looks very focused today. Looks like he's got a bit of grit about him. And the thing about the way he's playing 140. is he might be trying to intensify when he's playing and trying to calm down when he's not. Just trying to figure out what intensity levels he wants to play at while he's here. It's working so far. And he's only 116 away from getting a 4-0 victory. Which would put him at the top of the table on leg difference and points. Match dart, nothing. Well, I was just about to say it. Match dart one, and he didn't even get one. Because not for the first time today, we've had a missed single. Double top. Oh, he's looked at the wrong score. Well, well, well. What has he just done? Robert Thornton requires 40 points. Double 10. 
And he does find it. Well, that's a quizzical end of that match, isn't it? Incredible stuff. It just goes to show that darts is not just about accuracy on the dartboard. It's about accuracy in looking at the scoreboard. Kevin Burness needed double eight. He hit tops. Unfortunately for him, he has just dived down the table, losing 4-0 to Robert Thornton. Great for him as he goes top on four points. How can Aaron Monk and Martin Adams respond as they go head-to-head -head in match five? an interesting end to the previous match which saw our first bagel of the morning where Robert Thornton beat Kevin Benes by four legs to nil. We now go into a match which sees Aaron Monk and Martin Adams playing their second match of the day and also their sixth match in the Online Darts Live League for 2021. Currently it is three games to two to Martin Adams so Aaron is looking to equal that score there. You can see by his career best, World Youth Champion, from some years ago now, the 31-year-old will have to dig into his memory bank to remember that one. That trophy's been won by some incredible players throughout the last few seasons, but to be the first person on a trophy, it's always extra special. He was followed by the likes of James Hubbard, Michael Smith, Dimitri Vandenberg, Corey Cadby, and lots of others. It is, of course, currently held by Bradley Brooks. Another former winner of that trophy, Luke Humphreys, will be looking to improve on his season at Super Series 4 in the coming weeks. He's had a great season so far. A couple of finals on the floor and a final. 100. At the UK Open. I mentioned earlier that these players would be venturing to the Challenge Tour. Well, Benes will go. Thornton will go. Richardson will go. Monk will go. And so will Richie Benet. But Adams will not because he did not attend Q School. In order to go to the Challenge Tour later in the season, you do have to go to Q School first. But I mentioned these two have dueled on five previous occasions. Four of which were in week number one of phase one. 59. Some weeks ago. Aaron won their first meeting by four legs to three in a very good encounter. 140. Martin got revenge the next day, winning four legs to two. And then he got another 4-2 win the following day and then later in the week in the week one finals it was won by Aaron by four legs to one we've had a 1-6-1 today we're not going to get another one yet the closest match they've fought though was on Saturday night at the special 
The curtain raiser for phase two it was won by Martin. It was a good game. One, Aaron was just a little bit short of form. And wasn't able to get the victory. He's looking a bit sharper today. And there's more proof of it as he starts with a very tidy looking 14 darter. I think Aaron does realize that a lot of the players in this group are very, very capable. And if he's going to get his third Group A title, he's going to have to stay on this form. Second leg, it's Martin to throw first. Game on. No matter where you look today, there is genuine quality. I can envisage One, right now Chris two, Mason two. in the gym thinking, how lucky are you to get this group, Nico? Well, sorry, Mace. you got some great groups in phase one. I'm the lucky one today. And, of course, the rest of the week. Just to throw my favoured cap off, because I do have my favourites. Commentators will say to you they don't have favourites. But they'd be lying. I have my favourites. I'm very good friends with Martin. I'm very good friends with Aaron. In fact, I get on really well with everybody in this group. So, it's good to see some... Friendly faces going toe to toe, but I have to be honest. I'm not only looking forward to seeing Colin Monk play on Thursday night, but Chaz Barstow again. I'm such a big fan of the way he plays the game. I think he's got potential. And he's not a young player either. So he has experience to offer the game. I'll have to join Chris Mason next week when he brings you Phase 2, Week 2. And we will announce the players for Week 2 on Saturday. Chebel 19 leaves the bull. He's going to have a crack at it. Oh, it wasn't far away. Evidence that today, when shots are seen, they will be shot at. Martin, you require 25. Looking for a nice 14 dart response. But not for the first time today. Martin Adams has missed a big single. Thankfully, he doesn't miss that one. 17. He will be back. Just to reiterate who is coming in for Group C on Thursday morning. We have Jamie Kelling, Matt Dennant, and Diogo Portella. Double four is hit by Martin Adams for a 16 darter there, and that levels things up at one leg all. We could be in for a very similar game to what we saw on Saturday night, where both of these players took us to leg seven. But first and foremost, let's have a look at leg three to see who takes the lead. I get a bit of stick from some of my colleagues here at the Online Darts Live League for how I say Diogo when I go full on Geordie with it. 100. Well, I have to be honest. I am glad that Diogo Portella is playing on Thursday and Friday because it might take him away from social media telling such awful jokes. If you are someone who follows him on Twitter, he has been poisoning your social feeds with dad jokes for the last two weeks. So you can thank us later, everyone, because we're, we're going to take him away from social media when he's playing darts. You can't do both at the same time. I do wonder, you know, what is Martin going to do aside from the Online Darts Live League this year? Is he waiting... For WDF action to return. Could he possibly. Be someone who goes. For an MAD title. Will he make an appearance. At one of their showcase events later in the year. Could he do that. 161 is possible again. Bullseye. Oh Aaron drags it to the left and low. We are giving these big shot outs a massive scare today. Yes. 
Bullseye for Martin. Oh, it's beautiful. 12 dot break for Martin Adams, who is in the mood today. He's had some great shot outs so far. And you just get the feeling that when he is this shot, that bullseye is at his mercy. 2 1 Wolfie. Martin to throw first. Game on. Well, it has to be said on a Monday with sporting stories like Phil Mickelson, who becomes the first major champion in golf over the age of 50. We've still got this guy who was capable over the age of 60. Age is but a number in sport. You could talk about that in lots of sports. Ryan Giggs playing well into his late 30s for Manchester United. Goalkeepers playing into their 40s. Golfers winning majors in their 50s. 96. It's incredible to watch. We can wax lyrical about young dart players and young golfers and young sports people around the world, but don't no, underestimate no. the people who have a little bit more experience than them. And we have proven here at the Online Darts Live League that the form of Wolfie is still there. 95. It's been a very, very tidy match, this. Average of just around 100 for Aaron Monk. 106 for Wolfie. Making things extremely difficult for Aaron. He can barely breathe in the room, but even he is nodding his head as he sees another three big trebles. Aaron, you require 121. Sets up the 36. And he's going to get a look at it now. What a blitz this is from Adams. Double 18. Terrific stuff. 25 darts for the last two legs. And there aren't many players on the planet, and particularly in this group, who can live with that kind of standard. If Wolfie is like this on a Monday morning, with more practice and with a bit of energy, what could he possibly do over the next couple of days? He is one of the players, in my opinion, who is going to threaten a name daughter this week? 94. Average currently for Martin is 109.92. His best average in phase one was 104.79. So he's playing much better than that. But the job ain't done yet. I was talking just last week to someone about Raymond van Barneveld playing Phil Taylor in a Premier League match once where Phil averaged 114 and lost the match. And at the time, we thought that was unfathomable. Well, even with Martin averaging 108 here, he could still lose this match. Aaron is capable of putting three legs together. 92. He's going to have to maintain pressure when Adams comes to the board, though. He can't afford to allow him six darts from something like 178 or 95. even 223. He has got to negotiate this 195 and 6 because Martin is likely to take 223 and 6. So the job is just give him three here. You take care of the 58, and that's called closing him out. Aaron's been showing some good composure today. He's been a lot more focused for Monday. He was a bit erratic on Saturday night. But the quality in this match keeps coming. And the two legs that Aaron Monk has won in this match have both been 14 daughters. And in between that, Adams has been flourishing, throwing stuff better than that. So this match just keeps staying around that 105 level. Game on. The 
The mean average for the two is around the 104.5 mark. But it is Wolfie who has the 107 average and Monk with the 102. But maybe that tired visit at the start of leg six what? is a sign that maybe Aaron is energised and Wolfie is tiring just the tiniest little bit. Just the stretching of that right arm. Just trying to floss the pain out by twisting the lower arm bones. 59. He has had some issues with his right shoulder when playing in the live league last year. He had to put on some kinesthetic tape in between matches once, which was done in a bit of a hurry. And sometimes when you get a little bit of a, a pain in your dart arm, you just need to throw through it. And that's what Martin's trying to do right here. But he's in danger of losing this leg because Aaron Monk is starting to fire. 125. He hates that five, though. That just makes things a little bit more awkward. I can't remember the last time I saw Aaron Monk play Aaron with this kind of focus 19. and this sort of temperance. 62 left. He looks relaxed today. And that is a bad sign for the rest of the field. Pressure coming. Pressure applied. With Adams firing the first maximum of the match. That's a phenomenal statistic. A match of quality. That continues... But maybe not for long. Adams was thinking, okay, let's get into leg seven. He doesn't miss the big single this time. And he doesn't miss the second match dart. Martin Adams has just dodged a little bit of something there. He should have been throwing right now in leg seven. Look at those averages, 101 for both. The best match we've seen today. But Aaron Monk will rue chances missed in leg six. He could have taken it to seven, but he has had to settle for zero points. Going into the next one, it is James Richardson and Richie Burnett. They will join us post-haste. Hello again, and it's time to get into the next match. James Richardson and Richie Burnett are just about to join us, but follow that, lads, because both averaging 101 in the previous one, Aaron Monk missing chances to take us to a final leg decider, but it is unbeaten in the first two games for Adams and Thornton, and it's Burnett and, of course, James Richardson here looking to get their first two points of the day to keep with the leading pack. One of these players will be lumbered on zero points after two matches. Very similarly to the plight of Kevin Benes, who has not played poorly today. But it's a mark of the quality of this group that players are losing with ton averages. Nine practice darts for each player before we begin. And that's something they have grown accustomed to in the last few years. It was a rule brought in by the PDC. 
I think, in direct competition with the BDO back then because the BDO only allowed you six. And I think the PDC just wanted to give the players that extra visit to fine-tune their actions before a match began. And I was always a big fan of getting nine darts because it allowed me to switch myself on before a contest. It's been a funny old day for these two already. Richardson, who should have beaten Robert Thornton, missed multiple match darts in the last leg of the contest. And Burnett, who was beaten four legs to one by Aaron Monk. A response is needed by both. Typical James Richardson behaviour there. That is something you get from him plenty of the time. He's a very prolific 180 shooter. And throughout the course of phase one, he was the third most prolific 180 hitter of everybody in this group. 58. His 180 ratio per leg was 0 0.22. Which means that he was just a shade over 180 a leg. Great first start. And trust me when I say this, with Bennett on 241, if Richardson gets that 57, he goes for the ball. That's just the way he plays the game. James, you require 68. The disappointment from Bennett when he misses something, it's so evident. Bullseye. Richie, Just seems to be messing things up ever so slightly on approach to a double today, James. He just needs to sharpen that department of his game up a little bit. He's not hey, too he's far cool. away from finding James really good form. 25. These are the kind of shots you need to mop up with no drama. 17. Unfortunately for him, Richie, he's handed 17. one opportunity to Richie. To steal leg one. 42 hit. 32 more. That equals 74. And that also equals a first leg break of throw. Something that James Richardson is well versed in because breaks of throw were a plenty when he played Robert Thornton in his first match. Same is the case against Richie. Game on. Terrific maximum. Great way to start after you've broken the throw. That old adage of it's not a break unless you hold is incredibly accurate. Pretty similar to the way these guys are playing in leg two. Immensely accurate. Richie was very close to getting a nine on Saturday night. Found two 180s. 135. Got the 760 and missed the trouble to leave himself a double. He's got three trebles off the back of the 180 in this leg, but one of them was a treble five. And there's another treble. That pause that he has when he misses like that, it's almost... Rudolf Nureyev like. It's ballet like. It's very, very Richie gracious. Taking 143 out when your opponent's on 81 is not very gracious. It's explosive, but it's not going to happen. 57. And this time it's Richie's Richie turn to be a little bit messy on approach. 62 remain. Double 13. Game shown the second Superbly leg. done from James Richardson to re-break. Well, patterns just seem to happen when it comes to James Richardson. He doesn't like holding his throw today. He's only done it once, but now he has another opportunity to do so as we go into leg three. Leg it's James to throw first. Game on. 
James, who signed with a new manufacturer 91. within the last 12 months, is using new darts. A very interesting looking stem and flake combination as well. 100. Which he has not changed a lot about his equipment in the last 30 years. But there are definitive steps about the stems that James is using towards the bottom and towards the top. When you do change equipment, it does take a little bit of time to settle into competitive life with a new weight in your hand or a new dart flight shape. He is using 177. a moulded flight. Seems to be working really well. Those molded flights are starting to become more popular because they give definitive right angles when they're flying through the air. Dart players are incredibly precise animals. And that's exactly what James has been the last two legs. He has ramped things up to the tune of 103 average. One hundred. If he takes out this double twelve, he's got Richie Burnett just where he wants him. Game shot the third leg. Two one up, Richardson. and it's been a very, very good spell here from James. Very similar to what we saw from Martin Adams in the last match. In the middle portion, a twenty-five dart two leg blitz. That's exactly what James has just done. He's two one up, but it's still on throw. Game on. Well, just looking at the overall average of play during phase one. Of everybody that played every single game, every leg, the average was 84.59. Now, for players who do not have tour cards, I think that's very respectable. I expect the standard to go up in phase two because these players will have had more immediate exposure to matches. They will be sharper. They will be more in tune with the schematics of this building because dark players don't like change. And when they do have to change something, it takes them time to embed themselves. That's just how we're made. 100. But just to give you statos out there some insight into what happened in phase one, over 4.4 million points were scored in an exact amount. It was 4,439,994 points. We had 50 ton plus averages, 119 averages of over 95, 94. and 273 averages of over 90. 570 finishes. And let me just look at my stat screen. To pick out one more stat for you. We'll go with 850 matches played. Well, Burnett is looking at double 12. 72. And he's not able to take it out, but he does have a guaranteed visit back. One key statistic for me through phase one is that the total checkout percentage of everybody didn't really change much. 33.81%. Today, game that percentage has Ooh, been around the same. We've got a level game here, and that blitz from James Richardson in legs two and three, that has been stopped by Burnett very cleverly as we go into the second half of this game level. Fifth leg, it's James to throw third. Game on. Fifty-eight. Just to reiterate the changes that we have with phase two as well. It's all about that 100. golden goose. After four weeks of play, we will have Champions Week in week five. And Champions Week 45. will involve the three players at the top of the table after each weekly finals. And getting through the Champions Week, you will have the opportunity to get into the 
champions group at the end of week five and have the possibility of winning that £5,000 prize. It's not winner takes all. If you get yourself in that final group in week five, then you will see a financial windfall no matter what. But you want the biggest one of all. Oh, he nearly falls on the floor in disappointment with that one. That's just what you get with Richie. Look at the head shaking going on here. It's one of the reasons why he's so fabulously entertaining to watch. Ricky require 161. He's still in great position here to take the lead. Should go 25 here. 58. Picks up a single 18. This is match number six of 15 today. And we're rattling along at a very decent pace. 54. Well, I, for Richie one, am amazed that we haven't had a Richie Burnett calisthenics video yet. Because the amount of gesticulating we've had in this match and his and in his career is quite astounding. Double 16. Game Extraordinary burst here from Burnett, who finds a 15 darter in leg five to take the lead. And that 25 dart two-leg blitz that we saw from Richardson earlier, that's ancient history. Because now it's Burnett who has two chances to bag Six his first Richardson two points of the day. Game on. This will be his best chance. Throwing first and giving that 60 a bit of a telling. One hundred. Bennett, of course, looking for the W, which is signified on his shirt. Just look at the pattern. The red line. Well, it's red he gets there. And he is 220 ahead of Richardson, who is in trouble in the daily table already. It's looking like it's going to be him and Benes at the bottom of the table. On zero points going into the middle portion of today's play. It is Benes who we will see next against Aaron Monk, who is currently on two points. He'll be looking to join Richie Martin Adams and Robert Thornton on four in the next match, but Burnett is looking to join Monk on two. He will get there if he can negotiate another 100 points. Looking for the top left corner. And he under pitches it and hits the wall. Well, Richardson's played a steady game here, of an average of around 91. But Burnett, just a little bit better. Double 10, his first match dart. Oh, that's a worst case scenario to leave five. He will not enjoy that one little bit. James will recognize that this match isn't over yet. This is a very difficult conversion. Double two. In she goes. It might be difficult, but he didn't make it look difficult. He gets his first two points of the day. The average is very, very decent as well. There you go, 93.54 for Richie. Like I said, James Richardson with a 91, not too bad at all. But 50% on the checkouts for Richie Burnett, that tells the story. He got enough chances and he stemmed the tide early. Aaron Monk looking to get to four points against the pointless Kevin Burnett so far today. That one's coming up next.
Game 7 coming up next is Kevin Benes against Aaron Monk. The middle portion of today's play is just about to begin. A lot of people positioning themselves really well in the first portion of today's play, but now it's up to these to really kick on if they want to contend for today's daily title, which, of course, a lot of you might be having a bit of a punt on. You might wonder who is top of the table currently. I can confirm that right now Robert Thornton is top of the table on four points and plus five in his leg difference. Martin Adams closely following him, also on four points and a leg difference of plus three. Aaron Monk can join them on four points if he finds a way to beat Kevin Van here, which would potentially result in Kevin's third consecutive defeat. It's not that Kevin has played poorly today, because he really hasn't. It's just a measure of how well his opponents have played against him. Because Kevin has averaged around 92 and a half today, but it has resulted in two defeats. Maybe the key to Kevin Benes not picking up the victories in those matches is the doubles percentage for the day, which is way down okay, first leg, it's below 20%. Twenty percent. So that is something he needs to address. His last match, he lost 4-0 to Robert Thornton. So the first thing to do is to get a leg on the board oh, in the first couple of legs and then build on that. As for Aaron, he lost in his last match too. But no shame in losing to Martin Adams with 101.4 average. Best average from Aaron in a little bit of time. And it wasn't good enough to beat the 101 average of Martin. 135. 100. I think we're seeing... A little bit more focus in a lot of these players today because there's a referee in the room. One Don't underestimate 18. the factor of comfort for these players where they can just play. They don't have to add up their scores. That's why I think in phase two, we're going to see a lot of these players play better. This is a much better first leg from... Iron Man, as he finds an 11 data to start us off. And that is the best leg we have had today. Really, really good stuff from the Northern Irishman. And an early warning sign to Aaron Monk. If he wants to get points here, he's going to have to play well. Second leg, it's Aaron to throw first. Game on. And judging by what we saw against Aaron from Martin... If that continues, Aaron will think, why is everybody playing well against me? 140. You should take it as a compliment, Aaron. People recognise how dangerous you are on the dartboard. Bumper day of darts today. You don't only get the online darts live league. It's actually a bump a week. You've got 60. us on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday during the day. Then you've got us on Thursday and Friday during the day. And then at night on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, you've got us. 60. Then you've got Premier League darts tonight, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So if you're a darts fan this week, you are dipping your cookie in the tea and it's coming oh, up man. very tasty. I think the most exciting thing this week, aside from getting a referee in our room, is getting fans back to the Premier League. I'll be fascinated to see what kind of noise we hear and what boisterous nature we see from the fans tonight. Aaron, you require 76. 76. We'll see Aaron Monk level at one all. And he gives Benes... A little Kevin sniff on the 141. We've seen a lot of big shot outs today scared by players. Not on this occasion. 45. Aaron, you require eight. To stop himself getting frustrated, he needs to find this quickly. 
Double one. No score. That visit is going to irk him something rotten. Seven, you require 96. He might feel worse in a second. Double nine. Game and he is going to feel worse there. because he games. handed that leg to Kevin Burness. And Burness, on a silver platter, says thank you very much. And you have to pay tribute to Iron Man, who took out that double nine, which was in a really tricky conversion to the left of the board. But it is 2-0. Third leg, it's Kevin to throw first. Game on. When Kevin graced the Online Darts Live League in phase one, and I was commentating on him, there's a lot of jokes made about our match at the World Championship. And he said to me when he came in the building, be nice to me. And I said, of course I will. I don't dislike Kevin whatsoever. I actually think he's a really nice guy. But did we just see from Aaron Monk a little pad of beret or some ballier move there? He's been hanging around Richie Burnett too much. Dart players are funny creatures. 58. Still advantage Baness on the throw here. This is where you're thinking, leave 161 or leave 121. And he's left the latter. 180. Second 180 of the match. Leaves himself on the possibility of a 3-0 lead. 99. Kevin, you require 121. Things are not going Aaron's way in this match. Bullseye. Nice. Fancied it. I knew he's going to go for it. That's the spirit of what we're seeing today from the players. And for the second match in a row, someone is averaging hugely against Monk. 100. Kevin, you require 25. We'll get into that in a second in a bit more detail. But it's double eight for Baness, who Game fires in a 14 darter, and that's roughly where he's at with his average. 107.36 equals a 14 darter. And after that, he's averaging 108.15. This is one of the best performances he's put in so far in the online darts live league. Game on. Personal best 90. average in this tournament is 104.94. And the way he is firing at that 60, that is under threat. Easy five. I'm averaging 92, and there's nothing wrong with a 92 average. I know that a lot of people out there might think, well, 92 is sub-par. 100. But 92 is good play. The biggest issue here for Aaron is that he's had five shots at a double and he hasn't hit one. I emphasise this a lot when talking to people in different publications. That in order to win darts matches, you've got to have shots at double. That's why you've got the likes of Anderson... Lewis, 100. Price, Van Gerwen, all these big scorers winning more titles than anybody else, and especially Peter Wright over the last couple of years who has scored more 180s than most. Score heavy, give yourself you more chances. And Kevin has had more chances in this match. 41. He's actually had the same uh, amount of shots of double as Aaron, but he's had more chances over different legs. Perfect first dart. Tops it is. To save the bagel. Game oh, that's beautiful. Great quality from Aaron Monk there. And that's exactly what you're looking for when you've got 120 left. No matter whether you're 3-0 down or not, you're looking for the 61st. You're looking for the 20 after that. You get the tops, and let's move on to the next one. Fifth leg, it's Kevin to throw first. Game on. One hundred and forty. The Vanessa average has come down to one hundred and two. He's got sixty percent on his doubles. 
Easy one. You might be looking forward to the next match. I know I am. Because Thornton versus Burnett. That was the final from Saturday night's curtain raise at the phase two in 100. the Sporty Stuff TV trophy. More on that in a bit. And that is the middle match of the day. 69. You get the feeling that Aaron is clinging on to this one. And Paness looks ready to finish it off. 140. A terrific visit from someone who is evidently confident playing in this room. He wins more matches than he loses. Not today. Kevin, you require and even with that maximum, Aaron Monk is still affording Kevin Burness six darts from here to finish the job. Bullseye. 96. Almost job done. Before today, Kevin Burness had played 33 matches and won 26. A win percentage of over 62%. That has dwindled a little 60. bit after losing his Kevin, first two matches. 25. But he's about to rectify that, you feel. Double eight. Game he doesn't miss his third match dart. Kevin it's a Burns. really good performance from Kevin Burness, who lost his first two matches today, but with 103.7 there and 57% on his doubles, it is a case of deja vu for Aaron Monk, who loses his second match in a row with someone putting in their best performance of the day. What will we get from Thornton and Burnett next? You'll have to stay with us to find out. Things are getting a little bit tight in today's first day of the Online Darts Live League for Phase 2 Group A. Of course, we have had a couple of players play two and one two. Another one is coming up here, and that is, of course, Robert Thornton. Taking on Richie Burnett, who won his previous game a matter of minutes ago against James Richardson with a 93.5 average and 50% on his doubles. But he's up against his old pal, Robert Thornton, here. And they have plenty of experience playing against each other in this format. This is their sixth meeting in Online Darts Live League action in 2021. But the situation that they face in this daily table and in the Group A table, of course... It's pretty tight, especially with Aaron Monk losing his last two matches. Okay, leg, it's Robert to throw first. And Kevin Benes getting his first two points there. We've got two players on four points, three players on two points. So if Benes, uh, Benet, I knew I was going to do that at some point today. One hundred and eighty. <laughs> We've got a Benet and a Benes. There's always going to be a little bit of a crossover. If we get a Benet win here. We will have three players on four points after the middle portion of the day is complete because this is hey, the middle match ball. of the day, match number eight. 
you can sense how much Robert Thornton wants to beat Richie to just exact a tiny oh, bit of revenge no. on what happened on Saturday. They played for an extra thousand pounds against each other on Saturday night, or more specifically Sunday well, morning at around about 1.30. Robert was denied that extra bag of sand. One hundred, Robert. You're and a win against Richie six. here would equal their head-to-head -head at three games all. Look at this for a start. Game shot the Robert Thornton Robert has Thornton. come out of the traps like one of Gerwin Price's greyhounds. Very, very quickly, I might add. Eleven data does signal some intent, and Thornton is looking hard to beat today. Second leg, it's Richie to throw first. Game on. You don't know what I meant there by Gerwin Price's greyhound. Well, you obviously don't follow him on social media because the world champion and world number 100. one is very keen on his greyhounds. As are our friends at Sporty Stuff TV who will be showing our coverage on Thursday night, Friday night and Saturday night, of course, when we have the week one finals, which will be covered by myself. I'll be here all week. I could have followed that with a bit of a joke, but I'm not going to do so. One hundred. Thornton is even cheering his tons. He really does want to play well today. One hundred and twenty-one. Certain matches that you see often, and this is one of them. Eighty-five. You're looking at two of the all-time greats. You think about what Bennett has done in his career. It's not just that. World Championship. Back in the mid-90s, he was one of the best players in the world. Oh, if five. not the best player in the year of 1995. I've emphasised that quite a lot over the course of 2021 in discussion. 50 Should he five. have won more world titles? Richie, you require 135. I think maybe yes. Is Robert Thornton one of the best players not to have won a world title? Absolutely. 96. There's an interesting play there from Richie to not leave tops via 95. some means. Richie he left himself on 39, 39 and is guaranteeing his way of getting out of jail with a 32. He's just trying to figure it out. He's, it's absolutely right, Richie. Okay. Double nine. He didn't expect to be getting a shot of double nine in this leg. Game well, it doesn't matter because he's doing it anyway. And sometimes you just got to wave it off. Just create a very big smile. And just say, I've won the leg. It's 1-1. One, one. Let's move into a best of five scenario. Third leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. We do have some regulars who tune into our online darts live league all the time, and we really do value your company, whether you're tuning in via your favorite bookmaker streaming services One or indeed hundred. via the online darts YouTube channel, which has been getting a lot of hits over the last couple of months. Not just because of this live league, of course, but they do have the live lounge, which will take place. At some point, and they will be covering the Premier League action from Milton Keynes a little bit later, so stay tuned for more content from there. Interviews and snippets with the likes of Johnny Clayton and some of the other players coming up as we find out who makes the playoffs of the Premier League 60. over the next four days. That's something that Robert wasn't able to do when he graced the Premier League. He didn't make it to the playoffs. But there's a lot going on with Robert at the back of the room. There's a fair bit going on with Richie at the front of the room as well. That 180 sets up a possible four-dart conversion 40. at the end of leg three. But just look at Robert at the back of the room here. 
There's a lot going on. There's a lot of gesticulating. There's a little bit of neck exercises going on. A bit of head shaking. That's just what you get from him. He's incredibly honest body language wise. He can't be anybody else. And we don't want him to be anybody else. 80. Richie, you require 32. Great 180. But it might be in vain. Game shot and it is indeed, as we Richie see, a very Burnett. tidy 14 data from Richie Burnett. He's looking extremely strong. And after a, a start today where everything wasn't going right, he's starting to iron things out a little bit more now, and he might be causing more pain for Thorn. Flag, it's Richie to throw first. Game on. I bet she was having a word with his sleeve there, as if to say, have you grown? How dare you? There is no rule, of course, that says 100. that both sleeves on a dart should have to be the same length. You only throw with one hand. If you want your throwing sleeve to be shorter, to have more comfort. If you look at Richie now, he's not 100% comfortable. Who's to say that the sleeve on the left, if you're right-handed, can be longer than the one on your right, because the sleeve can get in the way. I remember oh, playing at the World Match Player once, and a new dart shirt of mine just had sleeves that were a bit long. So I ended up tucking it up about an inch, and I played a lot better. 180. Speaking of playing better. Second maximum of the match for the man they call Chocolate. Funnily enough, that match I mentioned at the World Match Play, where my sleeve was a bit long, was actually against Robert Thornton. What a leg this is from Chotto. Double 18 left after nine. What a game. 140, Robert, you require Double 18, then. He's got a grimace on his face. Game and he's also the got the fourth leg. Thornton. Seen lots of great legs today. We could have had a 10 there, and that would have signaled the intent for the rest of the players to try and get that magical nine. But we have a level game after four. We go into a best of three scenario the now, none the wiser the as to who's going to win this game one. On. You think the momentum is with Thornton? 100. Because he's got the throwback. He looks to have his groove back, too. 60. Robert Thornton in the background there, giving it the full David Gray with the neck exercises. I spent a bit of time on tour, and I've seen some of the gesticulating and the mannerisms of certain players, and some of them really do make you think I remember spending a lot of time with Clarkson at the start of my career, and he had this thing about neck jolting before a visit, and a lot of the time he would crack his neck. It used to make my make me twist a little bit. One hundred. Everybody's different, though. You've got to stay limber. You've got to stay loose as a dart player. It's not just about flinging darts at a board. If you look at the position of a dart player at the hockey. It's not a natural thing to do. 59. Standing sideways all the time. Constantly putting weight on one side of your body. One of the most valuable things you can have as a professional darts player is a very good chiropractor. To make sure that your alignment is good. It'll stop you from getting injuries. One hundred and forty. Unfortunately for me, I've learned that way too late. Surely one tops. Oh, Robert! Just goes to show. Never take the single for granted. Richie, you require one hundred and two. And he could be pushed out of position if Richie finds this. He's got eighty-seven left. Chance not taken. Forty six. 
Robert, you require 20. Double 10, we'll see Thornton back in front. Double five now. Oh, and he's hit tops. He's so good at hitting tops, he hits it when he's not even going for it. Oh, that's a huge, huge slip. Because now Burnett can break. And he does. He didn't take his initial chance in leg five, but when he's given another chance at it, he does not make a mistake. And now Burnett is looking to get his third consecutive victory against Robert Thornton. Can he do it? In the sixth. Sixth flag against Richie to throw first. Game on. Sixty. And Robert has been the stronger player in this match. But he is behind. Only because he has missed chances that he's cultivated for himself. But for the neutrals out there who don't necessarily have a favourite player in this group, the right result for you is for Burnett to win. 95. To make this group as tight as possible. 100. should say at this juncture that you should not feel afraid to get in touch on social media. We'd love to know what you think 40. of the league in its second year, of course. Feel free to get in touch with online darts on their social channels, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can get in touch with myself, if you wish, at the Asset 180 on Twitter. 97. But don't forget Robert to follow at Darts Live League, which will give you all the results from the Live League. Day on day and game on game. 60. You can, of course, follow the hashtag these days as we get a violent bounce out for Richie. That was all wire. The hashtag to follow on Twitter is OD Live League. And if you follow that hashtag, everything that oh, has the hashtag what? involved in it. We'll come up on Robert, your feed. You require 110. So you won't miss a trick. But Richie Burnett's missed the trick. He's given Robert six from here. 70. And he's going to try and utilize that second visit which he was gifted in a few seconds' time. The results that they've had... in their previous matches have not Robert included a 4-3. But we are going to get one Robert now Thornton. as Robert Thornton does break the throw and he will throw first in the last leg of this uh, contest here. For the first time in their six matches, we are going to leg seven. Seventh and final leg, it's Robert to throw first. They played Game three on. times in week two. It was 4-2 to Thornton, 4-0 to Burnett. We'll come back to that in a second. 4-2 to Thornton again. And then twice on Saturday night they played 4-1 and 4-2 to Burnett. But the one time there was a 4-0 in week two, Burnett averaged 109. One hundred and forty. Might need something quite astonishing if he's going to get over the line here. He's finding something rather astonishing. Oh, what a one eighty! It's still in Robert's hands, but he's going to need perfection. Oh, that's brilliant! Leaves the two data. What a last leg! At this point of a match, stats mean nothing. It's all about this moment right here. Tops. Oh, and he's missed both of them. And Burnett could be the ultimate thief. 
He's played brilliantly to give himself this chance. 66 left. He gets the shot of the ball. And pinches the match on the ball. What a game that was. Absolutely sensational from both players. And Thornton is defeated for the very first time today with an average seven better than Burnett. Just goes to show, give yourself a shot at the bullseye and you never know. Burnett on four points. So is Thornton as we go into match number nine. Follow that, lads. Adams against Richardson. Next. I don't know about you, but I think I needed a few seconds just to gather my thoughts after that match. That was, without a doubt, the best match we've seen today. It's up to everybody else to try and have a better one. But the last leg was absolutely astonishing. Let's get into James Richardson against Martin Adams. They are now in the players' room. The only person yet to register a point today is this man here, James Richardson of Rushton. From a part of the country... That is blessed with some very talented dart players. He doesn't live too far away from Ricky Evans. And he doesn't live too far away from Cliff Lazarenko. Do you remember him? Big Cliff. What a character. What a player. Well, this man from Rushton is somewhat unexpectedly at the bottom of the table currently. But after this game with him against Martin... Everybody will have played three matches. Adams is now the only player to be undefeated. He has beaten Kevin Burness by four legs to three. He has beaten Aaron Monk by four legs to two. And if he can beat James Richardson, he will not only confine James to the bottom of the Game table, leg, still, to throw first. Game he on. will go to the top of the table on his own on six points. So let's get into it. Some people have got in touch on social media just to let us know what they're doing. Darren Laker from Gibraltar has got in touch and he's said he's just found Darts, the online Darts Live League. Where have you been, Darren? Now that you've found it, 41. we expect you to be a regular viewer. It says... That we're making his working from home even more enjoyable. Well, that's what we aim to do, Darren. I see from your biography on your Twitter feed that you're a handy dot player yourself. So maybe you can play in that MAD event or the MAD event, which is taking place in Gibraltar next month. 100. Could be something that James Richardson wants to go to because he is currently the European champion of modern amateur darts. 
I am very disappointed, James, that you didn't bring the belt. 140. If I had one of those belts, I'd be propping it on the table every time I play it. Just so everybody can see it. 140. Well, as far as his play today is concerned, Richardson has averaged 93 in a 4-3 defeat to Thornton. And 91 in defeat to Burnett. 60. So it just goes to show the standard of this group when the person at the bottom is averaging around 92 for the day. 140, Martin, you require 144. James will know his plight. And the way you get yourself out of this little mess is by averaging a little bit more and giving yourself a few more chances. 60. It's not been the average that's been his James trouble. You require 80. It's his doubling. That's down in the 20% region. That's a bit of a wild one. And I get the feeling, knowing James's game, that that was for two Six double tops. Feet. So that was a really big slip. Martin, you require 84. Double 12. Now double 6. Game shot the first Tidy hold Martin from Adams. Martin Adams, who seems to have everything going his way today when he doesn't have to find those five or even four leg visits. He's still able to find a way. It's very wily, and he is in the lead 1 0. James to throw first. Game on. One hundred and eighty. That won't be the last. 180 you get from James Richardson today. He is noted for hitting lots of them. I remember a tournament he was involved in in Leverkusen a couple of years ago, I believe it was. And he had a decent run there. He just he felt like he was going to hit maximums all the time. He is one of those players who seems to flip-flop between pro to a darts and Challenge to a dart at the second tier. 140. There's never been any doubt about James's talent. And he's got some incredible moments to remem remember, but you can tell by the intensity on his face that there is so much more to give. 140. Had a nice tweet from Calvin Brookshaw, just saying that he enjoyed that Thornton versus Burnett match. <laughs> Who didn't? What a game. 91. It's nice to hear Dart fans getting in touch today. Somewhat multi-skilled. Maybe working from home and having us as company. Well, we really do appreciate your company. Well, Bullseye may be the target here. That leaves 77. Trouble 19 or trouble 15. I think that was the right shot because if you oh, always miss the single. I have to say this, and it's not a criticism whatsoever. His approach play today has been his biggest weakness. Missing singles, having scrappy shots from that kind of position. Easy one. He's made this Easy kind of situation one. harder than it has to be. He should have been sitting on tops. He is eventually. 14. But he needed the third dart to have a go. And if he loses no, this leg, the reason he did so is not just because he missed those two shots there. It's because he missed the previous single. Well, he's not going to be punished. So he's got a little bit fortunate. 79. James, you require 40. Tops this time with three. Game shot the Gets it in two this James time to equalise things up at one leg all. And Martin Adams has a bit of a leg off. James takes advantage of that. But in order to win this match, Richardson is going to have to find a brace at some point. Two legs of quality, maybe at the right time. Game on. In his previous game, he had a bit of a, a blitz from... Leg two and three, where he 
Delivered only 25 darts. But... Whereas that's good, you'd much rather do that at the end. When you only require two more legs. One hundred and forty. One of the things that I noticed in phase one was that if you had a very strong Monday, that was no guarantee of success for the rest of the week. We saw Keelan K and Jamie Caven have very strong Monday daily titles. But they didn't end up winning the group. One hundred. You've got to position yourself well today and make sure that you're not jolting your own confidence. Have a very good day tomorrow and then be in position to win the group on Wednesday. That's the most important thing in Group A play. You must be in position to win the group come Wednesday. If you have a day where you don't pick up many victories or even indeed no victories on Monday, you're currently on Tuesday morning thinking, I've got to win everything now. Ninety-eight. Nicely from Martin, who goes to the meaty section of the single. It's the kind of leg you want to steady the ship and make yourself feel like you're playing well. 60. 12 darts Martin thrown, sitting on a double of choice. Game and taking that double of choice Martin with a nice little marker. Not really needing that marker, but... He's so precise, isn't he, Martin Adams? We can wax lyrical about his accuracy for hours. But right now, he's 2-1 up, making things just a little bit more we'll miserable for Ruthless. Throw first. Game on. One hundred. Had a tweet from Brian McGinley saying that he wants to watch the darts in peace. So he's hoping... His other half stays in bed. Well, get the headphones on, Brian. And enjoy the darts. I sincerely hope you're enjoying today's play. I know I've really enjoyed this so far. James will enjoy that 140. This gives him a nice cushion. This is a difficult spot for James. Because when you've lost two matches in a row, you're then confronted with someone who could go top of the table and remain undefeated. You're afforded no mistakes. No mistake at all, as Nigel Pearson would say. Nigel, who I'm sure will be part of the Premier League squad for the broadcaster tonight. And was at the Aston Villa game yesterday against Chelsea and was almost losing his voice. Well, I was almost losing my voice in the last match. But Richardson is looking to plant in a 12 here on double six. Oh, he's left himself on double three. Not just the approach shots have been a little bit messy, but the last thing you want to do is leave yourself on something like double three. Well, James is an aggressive player. He will go straight for it. He'll not even think about two double two. One hundred, James. You require six. Watch him go two double two now. Oh, and he has as well. Oh, and it was the right thing to do. What a shot that was! That last dart from James Richardson didn't even touch the previous barrel. It just goes to show how precise that was with maybe just over half a bed to aim at. A really key shot to stay in the match. It's 2-2. Two, two. Game on. These two do not live too far from each other. Rushton in Northamptonshire. And of course, Wolfie from Cambridgeshire. They are neighbouring counties. Two 
It's a beautiful places on the border of Northamptonshire and Cambridgeshire. I actually used to live very close to James, just about 11 or 12 miles away in the fabulous town of Corby. 180. Also known as Little Scotland because of a lot of people moving from Scotland to Corby in the past. 60. Well, Adams, who has been really, really good on the maximums today, is continuing to be accurate in that department. But 43. that one is a little bit of a slip. Maybe a chance to get back in the leg. One. The only way he could have done that was with a maximum of his own. Looking for the Della. Double 12. Ooh, there was a shadow over the wire. That was a fabulous try from Martin. He was going there for what I like to call the 1983 vintage. Double six. And Game planted in affair. the green, three legs to two now, and Adams is peaking at the right time. The fact that he has the throw is the key thing here, and if he loses the next leg, he still has the chance to win on the throw in leg six seven. So James what happens in leg Rovers. six? Game on. Got to tip your hat to our referee, Owen Binks, as well. Not an easy job to referee four, well, 15 straight matches. You look 60. at some of the referees who work on television. They tend to do one game on, one game off. 60. But Owen's got great experience. He works with PDC events, and he will be going to Milton Keynes for the fourth Super Series of the year to officiate some of the streaming boards there. 60. Well, that's been a 60 fest in this sixth leg so far. And that's been broken. 140. A little bit more vocalisation there from the referee. What you're not seeing from Martin is a face of panic. He knows 100. that group phase darts like this is about getting as many points as possible. Yes. What's the point in panicking on Monday when you've already got four points in the bank? You'll do your best to try and stay perfect, but it's not the end of the world if you lose the odd match. You don't want to. But it's inevitable that you will at some point because nobody has come through a group, 100. James a group A, in fact, without defeat. The best we've seen is 26 points from 30 from Mike Warburton, only having two defeats in f 15 matches. 90. Quite an incredible run from Mike, that was. And this is a decent leg here from James. Oh, well, that is the pressure apply of that last arm. Double 16. 25% on his double so far. Game but that is a really good find. I said he was 25% on his doubles for the match. Well, he's 50% in that leg, so a little bit of improvement. He's going to need it in the last leg. And if he wants two points, he's going to have to do it against the throw. Seven leg seven coming up. Leg, it's Martin to throw first. Game on. One hundred and twenty three. A lot has been written in the last few weeks about the world seniors, of course, and Wolfie will be there. 
Tickets are now available for the World Seniors. I would get them quickly because I think they're going to sell out very, very fast. For more information on that, please go to the Twitter page for World Seniors Darts. Incredible amount of trophies have been won by all of the combatants who are going to be in the field. And a nice mix of world champions and people who were close to being world champions. I D7. wouldn't miss that tournament for the world. Can't wait to see it. As for who's going to win that one, we'll tackle that one a little bit closer to the time, I think. And I do get the feeling that certain players are dusting off their darts as we speak and trying to get into ring shape. But Martin Adams is one of those players who's going to have many opportunities to be competitive. And the more he wins here, the more threatening he will be come February next year. This is another great leg. I think that was a really good plan to stay on the treble 20 there because if he went to the 19s to try and get the big treble, he might have left himself on 98. He doesn't want to try and leave double 19. This way, he's going to leave either tops or double 12. Maybe not because now he's got 76. And he does not get a shot for the match. 57. James, you require 144. 144 to keep us in suspense. Well, Four, unfortunately one. for James, that might be the writing on the wall with Martin, Martin needing 40. just 40 points with three yards in hand to remain undefeated. Game shot That's what he match. does, and everything Martin in that match was timed very, very well. It wasn't one of those, I'm going to blow you away performances. It was, I will pick my spots. He wins with a 96 average, as you can see there. And again, the doubles percentage is very handy at 57%. Really good stuff. And James playing well, but not playing well enough to get points so far. Aaron Monk returns to the hockey now, and he takes on Robert Thornton, who's looking to bounce back after defeat to Richie Bennett. This one could be fun, couldn't it? As I look at 
some of the matches coming up. Well, this one has to start first. It's Thornton versus Monk. And they haven't played each other before in online darts live league action. So this one could be feisty. Well, first and foremost, we've got a bit of a strip clash here. Well, someone didn't get the memo. Same badges on their shirt. Same colours. It's almost like Aaron Monk wants to look like Robert Thornton. And why wouldn't he? What is it they say? Imitation is the first form of flattery. Well, Aaron Monk has the chance to imitate Robert Thornton's position in the league. If he was to win by four legs to one, they would be on the same points and the same leg difference after playing four matches. Everything was going so swimmingly for Robert. Two wins from two. And then he was involved in that blockbuster okay, game with Richie Aaron Burnett. First. Game on. He would say to himself that he only had himself to blame for losing that match because he had two shots at tops for a 12 darter to win that last leg. 59. And he missed them both. But the most important thing for this group is that Robert One is playing so well. Really good darts and starts a match with a 180 again, just the way he did in a previous one. 82. Yeah, today Robert has been playing much more like himself. He looks sharp, he looks more focused, he doesn't look as negative as he did at certain points in the last few weeks. And maybe that visit to Niedenhausen has given him. 120 bit of a shot in the arm to coin a bit of a, a 2021 joke there. 59. Average of 91 in beating James Richardson in match two. An average of just shy of 97 in beating Kevin Burness in match number four. Match eight, he averaged 97 again. That says to me that Robert is in a pretty good groove. Aaron, you require 152. But Aaron's got the darts in the first leg of this contest. And that tells us that Robert needs to find a break at some point. 100. Robert, you require 150. If he'd have got the 60, he might have stayed there. 98. Aaron, you require 52. No guarantee... Of a hold here, you've got to be accurate on tops. Game shot That's what Aaron does. Aaron 17 darts is good enough to take the first leg in this contest. And Aaron, who has one win from three today, is looking to even the score and get two wins from four. Can he Second get the win over Thornton? First. Game on. Always a difficult person to beat. 100. They have played each other 59. quite a few times in different tournaments throughout their careers. You can go all the way back to the German Masters 97. in 2012. Uh, Robert beat Aaron. By six legs to two. Robert actually beat Aaron in their first four meetings. 100. And then since then, in the four matches they've played, Aaron has won three of the four. So he has had a bit of a rebound in their head-to-head -head standings. 50. But they have not played each other since the UK Open two years ago. That's where Aaron won by six legs to five. 134. I do get the feeling there's a lot of respect from Aaron for Robert. Like there is from a lot of people. But I get the feeling that Aaron would like to be a player very similar to Robert, full of intensity, full of passion. 100. There's no reason why he can't be. Robert, you require 154. There is nothing that Aaron 
can't do on a dartboard. It's the delivery of the dart that isn't the problem. Like I said on Saturday night, for me, Aaron Monk needs to crack the thing between his ears. And I mean that with all love and emotion. Well, well, okay. That would have been a very Aaron Monk finish. I assure you, he wasn't going for the double 16. Oh, sorry, the double A to leave double 16. Well, Robert was going for the double 10. That is 20 points in the bank, and that levels things up at one leg all. It could have easily been two legs to nil to Aaron, but you've got to take that on the chin and move on. Leg three coming up. So leg it's Aaron to throw first. Game on. One hundred and twenty-one. Aaron, one of those players who decides to use an aluminium stem in a somewhat intermediate length. Don't get a great deal of players using the aluminium stem anymore. A lot of players have moved to either carbon fibre or the standard polyplastic. One hundred and forty. You might ask me why they would go to an aluminium stem potentially. Well. The aluminium is renowned as being just the tiniest bit heavier. And of course, when you're pushing your flight into the prongs at the top, they tend to hold onto the flight quite tight. There's nothing wrong with that delivery. This game is moving into a different stratosphere now. This one could get very good very quickly. It's already very good. Game show I don't think you can there. say that's Aaron very good, though, because that's better than very good. That's an 11 darter, and that's not the first time that we've seen one today. Robert Thornton had a chance at a 10 earlier, but that 11 presses home the advantage that Aaron Monk has we'll in this match at 2-1. Game on. 100. I said it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. But when Aaron Monk looks relaxed and is playing like this, he is such a talent. 100. He is genuinely one of the best players in the world. For me, he is a top 50 player. I'm not going to get too carried away. I'm not going to say he's a top 16 guy. But for me, of all the players that are currently on shore in the world, Aaron Monk is a top 50 player. 97. Who's to say that he's not going to get things back over the next couple of years and get himself back into contention? 43. I'm going to back him to do so. I think he'll do it. I would never back against Robert getting back on tour. He was so close at the last Super Series, Robert Thornton. I'm not even sure he was aware of what we call the Ratowski rule, where if he had won the tournament on day four in Germany, he would have been given the top alternate spot that is currently occupied by Charles Barstow. So he would have been given the chance to go to other events via other people's withdrawals. And that would have given him a massive opportunity of ma possibly Four. making the World Championship at the end of the year seven. and the Players' Championship Finals. Double top for 3-1. Oh, so seven. close. A wire Robert grazer. You can see what Robert was trying to do. Chevrolet 18 for two double tops. But he's now hoping that Monk misses tops. Oh, that is a big miss. No panic. Double 16. Eight. And that visit is going to really Robert, play it with Aaron's mind. Double 10 is good. Robert, and Robert got away with that one because he should be staring at a deficit of two legs. He knows that, but he's going to take the chances that he has given. He has already missed a chance to beat Richie Burnett. He's still alive against Aaron Monk at 2-2. Two -two.
134. Just saw something from Robert in the background there. And it's just a measure of how quiet this room is when they're playing. He took a deep breath into his towel. I think that's just respectful to everybody in the room. You may think you know Robert Thornton by watching him win the World Grand Prix and winning the UK Open, the World Masters, of course. And all of the things in between, the finals at the Grand Slam and the Premier League berths. But I assure you, not many people know Robert Thornton the way I do. I got to know Robert really well in 2008 when he came to the Shoalhaven Heads Bowling Club to play in the Australian Open Festival, which included the William Cross Pro-Arm event, which was won by James Wade, who beat Ronnie Baxter in the final. 180. But the most important event of the week, Robert won that one, the Australian Open Players' Championship, which was his first PDC ranking title. Aaron, you require 82. He might not be winning this leg, though, because that leaves double 16. Excellent stuff there. from Aaron Monk, Aaron Monk, who presses home the advantage of throw to get the 3-2 lead. Gets the lead back after losing that previous leg somewhat unexpectedly. And now he has the chance to win it 4-2 if he can break. Sick leg, it's Robert to throw first. Game on. Yes, Robert was instrumental in making 95. some of the worldwide opens more enticing for people wanting ranking points before the events that you have these days on the European tour. There was a time in the summer where people would pack their bags and they'd be away for about five weeks. We'd all go to Australia in the first week of August. Spend a week there as Robert spends plenty of time in the treble 20 in this leg. After the Australian Open Festival, you'd go over to Canada and play in some events there. And you go to the United States after that. That's when being a professional dart player in the PDC was seen as quite glam. You spend most of your time on planes. But if you needed ranking points in the summer, that's where you travel to. You backed yourself. 140, Robert, you require one. Speaking of backing yourself, Robert needs this now. This has got to go. Double 16. So oh, you heard the wire. Aaron, you require and now Aaron, Aaron can finish the job. Double 12. Game he hits two sixes. That is a Aaron. brilliant display from Aaron Monk and a thoroughly enjoyable match. And he now equals the points total of Robert Thornton and consequently is now on the very same leg difference as him. There you see, 100 average for Monk. Robert Thornton not playing poorly, but Monk just raising his level just a little bit as we go into match number 11, which is James Richardson still looking for that elusive point against Kevin Burness.
Welcome back to today's action. We've got game number 11 just about to begin. Two thirds of our action has now been completed and still two matches remaining for Kevin Burness and James Richardson. But it'll be really interesting to see what James can conjure up, not only in this match, but in his final game against Aaron Monk, which takes place in game number 13. Aaron seems to be coming into form at the right time. He's just got himself to four points to join Robert Thornton and Burnett on that total. Well, this is important for Burnett to stay in touch with those guys and indeed Adams at the top of the table. If Burnett can win here, he would get on four and Richardson would be cut adrift by two game winning margin. That would give him a lot to do tomorrow and on Wednesday and indeed against Aaron Monk okay, first, in his James next match. Game on. Kev Burness will bring this day to a close against Burnett. Let me just get that right. That will be 100. in game 15 in around about an hour or so. Plenty of water to go under the bridge between now and then. But the kind of day that Benes has had, he's actually played all right. To start off, he suffered defeat to Martin Adams by four likes to three with a 92 average. Then suffered a 4-0 defeat, averaging 93. So he improved. 100. But had a worse result. But then he saved his best for Aaron Monk, averaging 102.2. I get the feeling the last furlong of today's play is going to see some belter darts. And that is a joke aimed at our referee, Owen Binks, because he snapped his belt on Saturday night. Somewhat inadvertently. Double 10 for a 12 darter and a hold. Well, what was really interesting about that dart, that 12th dart that he threw in that leg, is that he shifted to the left on the double 10, even though he didn't have a blocker. Did he notice that he did that? Probably not. Doesn't matter. 12 dart or 1-0. Second leg, it's Kevin to throw first. Game on. That little statement just goes to show what goes through my head every time I commentate on darts. I'm looking at these 99. micro situations all the time to see whether it's making a difference. But when you are playing darts, what you're not doing is thinking. Especially when you're playing well. That's the key to being a great dart player. The ability to not think, to just do. 140. The grip of James Richardson has always perplexed me a little bit as he goes for the top left corner. 60. Narrowly misses out. Because he almost delivers the dart to a set position near his eye line, sideways, and then twists the dart with his hand to make sure he's aiming straight. Just watch this. Comes out sideways, then he twists the hand clockwise at the very end. I really wish we had a slow-mo of it. It's really interesting. 127 in game. Don't deny us. 102. He could have hit the 127 in game as a dart player that looks fairly similar to the person who uttered those very words at the World Match Play once. Double eight. And the quality in this game continues. We started with a 12 darter. We've just had a 14. So my theory about the quality of the player going towards the end today is being proven by these fantastic players as it's 1-1. One, one. James to throw first. Game on. One hundred. I've had some people on social media asking about my elbow. Well, it is my left elbow that has been operated on. I have lots of problems with my left arm. No problems with the right arm of Kevin Burness. But I had a, a compressed ulnar nerve decompressed. 
couple of weeks ago. And then 42. an elbow reconstruction is completely needed in the summer, which will not be fun. There's a lot of bone problems in that left elbow of mine. 140. You may wonder as well, because I have been asked this question in the last week. There's nothing wrong with your throwing arm. Why can't he just play? Well, if he can't retrieve the dart properly 100. with both hands, and you can't have your natural position with your left hand, it's just going to make things more awkward. I'd rather be 100% fit for the beginning of next year than continually going through He's pain here. and discomfort. That's not what we're seeing from these players today. We're seeing fully fit players who really are sharp. And for me, this has been one of the strongest groups I've seen. 124. Doesn't have to go for it and recognises that. This is a very, very good performance from Benes so far. I'm not going to spook him by telling you he's average. We'll get onto that later if it, it Kevin, improves 40. or even steadies out. Double top. Game show Just very, Burnett. very good. And with that 13 data, his average has gone down. That just tells you how well he's played in this match so far. He's 2-1 up now. And James Richardson, no matter what he does today, he's always being we'll puzzled by Kevin's his opponents. Game on. This is extraordinary. We've seen some terrific darts from people. And you don't think that Kevin's going to break that average record of Jason Askew, who unfortunately didn't play his best darts on Saturday night. That was a bit worrying. I hope... Jason rediscovers his form soon. But Benes, who is evidently full of confidence, courtesy of those two weekly wins in phase one, and has had some Ooh, trials today, but has come through shining in his last match and a half. He's playing exquisitely. 140. If he can negotiate that 81 in the next visit and have a really good leg in the next leg, he could beat James Richardson, who's averaging around about 96, with something very, very large. Double 16. Absolutely sensational stuff. And the average goes north again because the 12 data is way over the 120 mark. He's currently around the 117. Who is this guy? Is this Jose de Souza in disguise? It's James to throw first. Game on. Well, just as I say that, his average comes down to 115. 140. But it's still not bad. Every now and again, you play darts and you feel like you can't miss. Well, the only thing he has missed is one shot at a double. Everything else has been brilliant. 45. I have to say, I didn't think Kevin Burness could play at this level. 60. I knew he could average around you know, between 98 and maybe 104. But even in a short format, to average this much takes genuinely brilliant skill. That's his perfect first start. He can compound it so easily after that. All he's got to do is under-pitch it by half a centimetre and let it glide into that 60. His average, if he takes this out, will be enormous. Bullseye. What a display from Kevin Burness. Kevin Burness. Oh, take a bow. What a shot to finish it as well. 121 out. And there it is. 117.2. Best I've seen since Jason Askew in week one of phase one. Phenomenal stuff. Well, over to the next game. Burnett and Adams. Allow me to say this, guys. Follow that.
interesting game that was. I'm just looking through the stats, trying to digest what we've just seen. As Kevin Burness has absolutely mullered James Richardson and kept him at the bottom of the table. But maybe when you looked at the schedule this morning, you were thinking, what match am I looking forward to the most? And you might have looked at this one. Because how often do you these days get to see Wolfie Adams against the Prince of Wales? Two of the stalwarts of the BDO after the split in 1993. Who graced that greatly excited stage. And if you think about it, almost 30 years later, they are still playing brilliant stuff and still going toe to toe. Don't you just love darts? I know I do. And one of the reasons I love the online darts live league is because of the way this league is turning out today. We have one person at the top of the table on points. That's the undefeated Martin Adams. And then he is closely followed by not one, not two, not three, but okay, so four so people on four points, first. all Game with on. differing leg difference totals. This has been an absolutely brilliant day so far. Now, I'm the kind of analyst within the game who will tell it like it is. There are going to be days where you think, this is a bit attritional. This is a little bit going round the houses darts. But not today. We have had a treat for a Monday. And I'm not just talking about that 117 average we've just seen from Kevin Burness. We've had all sorts. That's now two consecutive 100 averages for Kevin Burness. Wins with 102, then 117. We've seen wins and nothing else from Martin Adams today. He beat Burness four legs to three in the first match of the day. And because of the way that Burness has played since then, that win looks even better now than it did a couple of hours ago. Well, the man who has a very similar surname with T's instead of S's has got himself a strong start here against the former England captain. Richie, you require Trouble 24, double 19. That is the proposed route anyway. He's just looking to leave tops now. 58. That is exactly what he has done. Under absolutely no pressure, which will suit him down to the ground. One hundred. Richie require forty. Tops it is then. Just glide it down the barrel. Game Just like that. Richie Perfectly Richie done by the Welsh veteran. The Prince of Wales, the original Prince of Wales, because this is not Louis Williams we are watching. We are watching Richie Burnett. And he has taken a 1-0 lead against the Group A table topper. Second leg, it's Martin to throw first. Game on. 14 daughter to start his campaign in this match then. I'm just looking through a few research websites and I will do a lot of research between now and Wednesday 85. to try and find some matches that Richie Burnett and Martin Adams have played in the past because some of them, in fact, if there are any, because you just don't know if they've played each other. I'm sure they have. But it was probably back in the 90s where a lot of the games have not been recorded. So I will dig as deep as I possibly can to find some narrative between these two. One hundred. I'm sure they've met in some sort of arena. One hundred. One of the main things is that they are playing each other right now. Years after winning world titles. 
140. Of course, 2007 being the first one for Martin. 1995. 22 years. Actually, 12 years previous. I'm getting ahead of myself. I've forgotten what year it is. Happens to me all the time. I still think it's 2011. I wish it was 2011. That was a good year for me. 100. Well, just digging into their past, I seem to have found a couple of games that they have played. We'll get into that in the next leg because this is more important for Martin Adams right now. That makes his decision 11 and bull. 51. We don't get the bull. Richie See lots of magic on the outer ring today. Could we get a shot at double 15 here potentially? Or indeed double 18. Superb leave. Martin, you're so Martin knows if he misses this, he's probably going to be 2-0 down. 51. Oh, Richie was peering second, over his shoulder, Martin. wasn't he? Did he see him a bit like Joe Pesci in Lethal Weapon 3, just going, hello, what's going on here? Well, Richie, we've got some bad news for you. Martin hit that 25, and it's now 1-1. Third leg, it's Richie to throw first. So I have a record of two games that they've played against each other. And it was one win for Richie and one win for Martin. One of them was back in 1995 on the 14th of May. And it was in a final. It was in the Welsh Open in 1995. Just more proof that Richie Burnett was the best player in 1995. Yes, I'm stalking that debate again. Quarter finalists back at the 95 Welsh Open. Ted Hankey, Tony O'Shea, Tony Hull, and Paul Williams. 180. Andy Wallace in the semi final. Butch Paul Knighton from the northeast of England in the semi. And it was Adams and Burnett in the final. And it was won by Burnett. 100. I love looking back at these old results to see who was. Who was at the forefront? One Tell you who's at the forefront in this leg, though. That's Burnett. That's his second maximum in this leg. Extraordinary stuff from the Welshman. He's still got it. I would sing it. But I'm sure it's going through your head. You can hear it by yourself. 38. Richie, you require 81. Travel 19 or travel 15, of course. Great second dart. Leaves him on double 18. 63. Hates that shot of double 18. If you're going to miss that shot, miss it on the outside because nobody likes double nine. 137. Richie, you require 18. He's going to split it, and he just <laughs> leaves double four. One scores left. He's just making sure. He has he got that one, though. Good Richie thinking Burnett. by Richie Burnett, and very good execution on the second dart. The first one was just a little bit too close to that 15 for his liking, but the 14 darter is good enough to give himself a 2-1 lead against the former England captain. Four flag, it's Martin to throw first. Game on. The other meeting that they had was in a tournament called the Brandstaff Masters. And Martin Adams beat Richie Burnett that day 100. by seven legs to nil, according to the stats here. But I'm looking at the rest of the play. I'm sure it wasn't. Se oh, it was seven legs. All seven legs had to be played. And it looks like it was a group format tournament. And Martin won all seven legs. Oh, well, well. I'll still do some digging over the next couple of days to see what other games they've had in their past because I'm pretty sure they will have played some other ones. 140. 
That's one of the beautiful things about the internet. And there are people around the world right now collating old statistics and old matches for our pleasure to look back and see what happened in 2005. What happened in 1994? People still want to know. There will be old magazines that publish all these kinds of results and they've got to be brought into the digital era. There will come a time where all dart results Wrong. that have been recorded at some point will be on these websites. But for now, we'll just have to rely on the information that we have at hand. But what we know about this match is that it is extremely tight. 45. Maybe until that point there. This is an opening for Burnett. 140 is prime. 100. A ton Marcy will do. Require 133. This is one of the most difficult outs on the board. It just got a little bit easier. It just got very simple. Oh, Martin Adams, what a shot that is to keep it level at 2-2. We are seeing such fantastic play today. I'm talking about the Bernays game previously, but that, to deny Burnett an opportunity to go 3-1 up, is absolutely tremendous. It's Richie to throw first. Game on. 64 years of age, still got it, still smiling. No wonder everybody loves Martin Adams. What a great darting product, and what an ambassador for the game. He's doing some prime wading in this match. I can guarantee you of that. 30. His average is a good 10 less than Burnett. And he's level. 100. And you can see in the background what Martin wants to do. He, he likes to talk to himself, but in a respectful manner, what he's doing is doing it silently so that he's not putting his opponent off. 140. I always found that really, really difficult when I was on the stage, especially. That's why I would stand so far away from my opponents that if I did grunt, 40. they couldn't hear me. Too often I was always talking to the crowd. The benefit of hindsight. 140. Has this match turned on that 133 out? I get the feeling it might have. But Burnett ain't going to give up. Oh, really good. He hasn't got to a finish, though. Adams gets under 100 here. He's got a great shout of being 3-2 up with a break. 95. And maintaining... Potentially, that unbeaten run today. Wasn't able to get the 140 from 180 last time, but gets it with a nice dismount on that one. This is for the biggest break of throw of the match. 40. Even though Seven. Martin misses that single, it may mean Richie, absolutely nothing. 40. Uh oh. What is it this here? There may be trouble ahead. Double 16 to rescue the situation. Absolutely world class from Burnett. It just goes to show there are more than one, there's more than two ways to skin a cat, I guess. I'm sure that's not the way the saying goes, but there's more than one way to hit 40 points. One, seven, double 16. Still adds up to, uh, to 40 points. Game on. There's more than one way to skin a cat. That's the right saying, isn't it? I'm a cat person, so I shouldn't really have said that. In fact, you know what? Easy Instead one. of saying that in future, I'm going to say there's more than one way to hit 40 points. That sounds better, doesn't it? Four. 
59. Each and every game today has had great moments. And if this standard continues to the end of this week, I'm going to need next week off for my voice to recover. But that neck jerking of... The Sporty Stuff TV winner from Saturday night. Easy one. It's starting to accentuate a little bit more. Sixty. They were involved in that Sporty Stuff TV trophy on Saturday night, but they didn't play each other. They were involved in different groups. 59. And they didn't collide in the semi-finals of the final because they managed to avoid each other. So this is the first time they have met in the Online Darts Live League. It won't be the last because they'll play each other tomorrow. And they'll play each other again yeah, on Wednesday. Hundred. They might play each other again later in the week. They can, of course... Play each other six times potentially, but one that's bad 100. tactics from Richie. Should have gone eighteens at some point in that visit to try and leave the finish. Even a sixty with that last dart would have left one six two. Easy two. Could be going all the way. Very safe. Too safe. Martin, you require 78. And I get the feeling we are going to leg seven again. Double 12. Game Double six has been a really good Martin friend Adams. to Martin Adams today. This one deserved us to take it all the way. It's an absolutely brilliant game and a key two points coming up. Will Martin Adams stay undefeated or will Richie Burnett get himself to six? Seventh and final leg, it's Richie to throw first. Game on. Averages in this one, 88 for Martin, 94 for Burnett. 60. So a little bit of a come down from yesterday, oh sorry, the previous game of 117. But that was always going to happen. Eighty five. Martin will play his final game against Robert Thornton in match number 14, which comes in two games' time. Burnett finishes up against Burness. 60. But after this one is complete, completed, one match left for everyone. And it will be James Richardson's last chance to get some points against Aaron Monk next. This could be a key maximum. 140. At least he didn't leave it short. That's the experience of Adams there. Who played his county darts for Cambridgeshire. 59. And they synonymously used the very dark blue shirts trimmed with white. Had some immense players at Cambridgeshire. Not just male, three. but female as well. I remember a, a few players from the Cambridge team. Les Hodkinson, what a great player he was. Former winner of the Northumberland Open. I actually refereed that final when he beat Gary Anderson in that final. There's a little stat for you. I think that was around 2002. Another great Cambridge players. Sean Greatbatch. And, of course, Sandra Greatbatch. Look at the pressure on the face of Burnett. He can sense that this game is being lost. You require 93. All is not lost if he does lose it. Still two days to go. He still has one match remaining today. But he's going to go up against... Kevin Burness maybe at the peak of his powers. Three. 
One. Well, he holds the score to leave 100, just in case Martin falters here for a final leg break of throw. One remaining shot. And he misses, so Burnett does get a chance to steal it. You require 100. This is the shot that Thornton missed against him in their head-to-head -head in game number eight. And Burnett does not get a shot. 80. He hits tops eventually. But he's 20 points short, of course. He might have thought Martin that the first one was in. 10. Oh, he can't believe it. He thought he'd won the match. And, and now he's just lost it. Match. What Martin more could Adam. possibly happen today? <laughs> Incredible stuff. I'm sure Burnett thought that that first shot at tops was in. And when he hit the second one, he thought he'd won the match. Well, he's lost it. He averaged 89, as you can see. Adams with 86. But the lesser average does come up trumps this time. What fabulous drama we've had today. And what could we get from James Richardson and Aaron Monk in their final game of the day? That's coming up in a couple of minutes. It's been a very, very interesting day, hasn't it? I um, really, really enjoyed this. I really hope you have too, because Group A is delivering. What will we get from the final matches of these players? Uh, well, it's going to be Aaron Monk and James Richardson to close their campaign first as they go head-to-head -to, -head to try and bolster their points total. Aaron Monk, part of the group on four points, of which there are four people. He could finish the day on six, which will be a tidy total. Well, James, who has not tasted a win today so far, is about to climb a very steep mountain if he wants to try and get through this group. He may have to be perfect from here on out if he wants to get the berth in the finals okay, out of this group. James to throw first. Game on. He does have the throw. One hundred, And he has won their previous meeting in a competitive game. And that was back in 2016. 
It was a qualifier for the European Darts Open, which back then was staged in Dusseldorf. A tournament that was won by Michael van Gerwen against Peter Wright in the final, which back then, it seemed like most weeks, a European Tour event was between Michael van Gerwen and Peter Wright. The only oh, difference okay. was, what was Peter Wright throwing? And what will Peter Wright throw tonight? 97. I think it would be hilarious if Peter Wright threw the exact same darts that his opponent is throwing. Now, it's very 17. unlikely, of course, that James Peter Wright is going to get himself through to the playoffs. So he might have some fun. James Richardson's looking to have some fun on a 164. 139. I expected that to go in with the day we're having. Quite simply, brilliant today. 180. And just when you think he's out of the leg, he plants in a maximum just in case as James goes for the first leg hold and does convert. 14 darts is good enough to take the first leg and it will make dinner or indeed lunch here in the UK uh, taste a little bit sweeter and a little bit more salty if he can find a win in this game. game on. The last thing you want to do on a day like today is go away with no points. 43. After all the hard work you've put in early in the morning, you finish up around 2 o'clock in the afternoon and think, I didn't get any points today. 20. But darts is a sport where you get given nothing. Sometimes, as commentators, we will coin the phrase, there's a leg on a plate. 140. It's just a turn of phrase. Because, if you think about it, there is no such thing as a freebie in the game of darts. Your opponent the can eight. give you multiple chances, multiple visits, in multiple legs and sets. You still have to hit the double. You still physically have to win hey, the game. That's what I respect about it the most. And coming from someone who was given the chance to win a World Cup with two darts in his hand and not doing so, I can taste the salty side of that equation. 137. Good response from a lad I like to call A. Aaron, based on one of his favourite comedy sketches. Well, it doesn't make any sense because he's A. R. R. Ron. Double top, double top. 80. Now, this time he gets the tops in the first start and misses the second, which is exactly the opposite to what we saw with Burnett at the back end of the last match. 139, Aaron, you require 20. Double 10, and you can't miss this time. Game shot really confident end. shot at double five right there. He could find yourself squeezed into a bit of a corner with two shots at double five, and your opponent sitting on 76, it was, I think. So, I think he finds the shot. Prefer. It is 1-1. One, one. Game on. One It's going to be a bumper summer of darts. Not only will you have oh, phase darts. two of the online darts live league, you'll have more super series darts where people will try and get their places for the world match play solidified. And there will be some modern amateur darts as well. 97. The most important thing for the world right now is that we all go in the right direction when it comes to COVID-19. 51. James Richardson really does want a 170, doesn't he? He's left it a few times today. He didn't even think about getting that treble 11 or even going somewhere else. 60. James, you require 170. He left it. He might hit it. 
pulse for effect. Oh, ho, ho, there we go. What a beauty. Leave it. Take it. Thank you very much. Well, he paused for effect between darts two and three, and it worked. 170 out, 2-1. To to throw first. Game on. That'll make you feel a little bit better. We all love a 170 checkout, don't get me wrong, but it's not the hardest checkout on the board. That treble 20 has been absolutely crucified in this day of darts. 135. But when he is playing well, James Richardson just finds the inner ring with ease. And he's in position to make things very, very difficult for Aaron here. And he's just tapping him on the shoulder in this very key fourth leg, saying, if you slip up, I'm there. I'm only half a dart behind. Ninety-one. Playing really well in this match. This is his best display of the day so far. But what he's got to do from here is what he hasn't done previously. And that is convert Games you require at the back end of a match. He's forced Aaron to take this one, 2-6. That's really, really good pressure. This is going to test Aaron mentally to see what he can conjure up here. Excellent. Bullseye for him. One, oh, one. grazes the outside Ginger wire. wire 40. A really immense effort. Game Tops for Richardson, and it's Game a 13-dot break of throw. This is the best he's played today. He's waited a long time for this opportunity to get a two-leg gap and to be one leg from victory. But that's exactly what he has as we go into leg Debates number five. James to throw first. Game on. One hundred forty. Well, this is the kind of form that James really wanted to have earlier. Maybe he thought that he could squeak some points early with people feeling a bit rusty. Well, I have to say that nobody has looked rusty today. Everybody's had a standout performance. 95. And ordinarily, you would say that this from James is one of those performances that you rarely see. 58. Well, he's averaging 108. That is dwarfed by what we saw from Vanessa earlier. 96. He's left it again. Again, he didn't even think about the treble. Aaron's got to hit a maximum to leave a 167. Wow. Oh, and he's done it as well. Oh. Great jousting. And I feel that that visit was as such because of the 180 of Monk. If you'd have hit that 167 out, that would have been the second hardest six-start conversion on the dartboard. Arguably, the most difficult. 60 for Bull. Gets the 60. Doesn't get the Bull, so one match dart has been missed. Can Aaron cling on? 48 for Tops. Or for the Bull! Oh, what a shot from Aaron Monk. Oh, it's typically Aaron. We're seeing so many highlights today. I'm getting carried away, and I hope you're enjoying every single bit of this. There's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's more than one way to get that shot. Fantastic. Sick flag, it's Aaron to throw first. Game on. He just loves a double-double finish or a double-bull finish. Maybe his most eye-catching shot of phase one was a 1-2-1 one, one where he hit bull, treble seven, bull. One He's massaging 80. his inner Hugh Jackman. 
the greatest showman potentially, but he might be on the end of a bit of a tousling here in the end because Richardson, maxing at the start of this 99. sixth leg, has got the darts. Fifty-seven. Hasn't used them brilliantly. If Aaron Monk can get out of this situation of 3 1 down, 95. And taking that 107 on the cliff edge after surviving a match dart, it'll say a lot about him. And where is that mentally today? He's going to leave a finish, and it's a very good one. James, you require 120. He has to be given the chance first. Bullseye, second match dart. Oh, what a way to finish that excellent match from both players. Sometimes you have to just raise your fist and say, you were better than me there. Aaron Monk gave it everything. He averaged 91, but look at that from James Richardson. 107 from him to finish the day on two points. Great, valiant stuff from him as we go into match number 14, which involves Martin Adams and Robert Thornton looking for more points. Last three matches have been quite special to say the least. And we aren't finished yet. We've still got two matches to go for Group A on Monday. And this is only the first day of three where we will see all these players again. And I, for one, am already looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> well, just to temper that a little bit, we've still got this match, Adams versus Thornton. And then Burness versus Burnett to finish things off for today here at the Online Darts Live League. What more can we possibly see? We've seen heroic checkouts from both Monk and from James Richardson in that last match. We've seen massive averages from Richardson and from Burness. What more can we possibly see? Adams will have the throw in this particular match. And he is assured that he is going to be at the top of the table at the end of today because he's already sitting on eight undefeated points and nobody can catch him. The best that Thornton James can do is six. The best that Burness and Game Burnett up. can do is six. So this man will be top tomorrow when we start at 9.30 a.m. on the Online Darts YouTube channel and the streaming services of your favourite bookmaker. 180. The best seat in the house has been the referee today. I spoke to him extremely briefly before the last match, and I said, 140. It's not usually this good, Owen. I said, you're being treated to a magnificent display today from everybody. 
114. We've seen all sorts. We've seen an average of over 117. We've seen 170 out. We've seen 161 out from Vanessa earlier on in the day. We've seen so many 180s. This is one of those days where you realise how well you have to play it Easy when people are on the game. And I think Robert understands that the undefeated Adams is going to take some stopping here. 43. Martin, you require 96. Nine darts thrown, and he's already under 100. He's not going to be on zero after four visits, though. 56. He is on tops with an opponent north of a finish. Strong, strong stuff. 90. Martin, tops you it is. 40. Game That's what he gets. He's player. looking Martin really, Adams. really good, isn't he? I know that other players today have played better than he has, most of all in one or two games here and there. But throughout the course of the entirety of Monday, he has Robert been the most consistent. First. Game on. Earlier in the day, it was Thornton and Adams that were the two undefeated players after two matches played. Since then, Robert has faltered somewhat. He should have beaten Richie Bennett in what we thought was a game that wouldn't have been usurped quality-wise. It was a great dramatic match in match eight. But Robert did lose that match. And then he lost to Aaron Monk. Aaron averaged 100 in that match. It was a great game. 68. But if Robert was to lose this one as well, he would be able to take stock over the next 16 or so hours and say to himself, I did not play bad on Monday. 60. If these guys turn up the way they have today with extra 42. practice in the tank, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I genuinely think with this format and these players playing the way they are, that 120 mark is under threat. Someone could do it. 140. Yes, that's the sound of me sticking my neck out. Ninety-one. Intelligent switch there from Robert. Utilising that 17 bed. Ideally, Martin wanted a maximum to leave double 18 there. Staying on the 20s, I think, is the right play here. And Robert in the Ooh, background is doing a somewhat Robert, mini neck-breaking meditation there. Well, that leaves 85. 120. That leaves less than 85. Ninety-five. Robert, Good last start. 40. Just in case Robert misses tops, you don't expect him to. Double ten is still open. But double ten is not really scared. And this is an unexpected chance to break the throw. These are the kind of scraps that wolves gobble up. Fifty-eight. Robert, you require ten. Double five. Game shot. Good shot. Leg. Robert Thornton. I said good shot. Good result is probably more accurate because he's probably a good half an inch wide of the target he was aiming at. Doesn't matter. That's a good thing about those doubles. Sometimes they're a little bit wider. One one. To throw first. Game on. Well, these two have met in an online darts live league match, and it wasn't that long ago. One hundred and eighty. 
City. Second maximum of the match for Adams. They met after midnight. 78. From Saturday night's play in the Sporty Stuff TV trophy. And it was Robert Thornton who broke Adams's heart in beating him in that semi-final by four legs to two. It was a very good game. 100. Robert averaged 95.15 and had 50% on his doubles and defied something 59. against Adams, which when you look at the statistics, it makes you puzzle statistics as a whole because they had six legs. Adams averaged 101.33. He had 100% on his doubles and lost. Just goes to show that statistics don't win darts matches. Magical moments and good accuracy at the right time. That's what wins matches. So if you're one of those players who loves to look at your stats, yes, you can, but they're just a guide. There's only one statement that you need when it comes to these matches. Martin, you Did you win? 40. Yes or no? Does Martin win this leg? Yes or no? Game shot on the third leg. I'll Martin take what's Adams. behind door number one, please, says Martin Adams. He's 2-1 up now, and he's only two legs away from a perfect day. It's a Lou Reed, right? So it's such a perfect day. He's two legs away from it. It's Robert to throw first. Game on. I do hope that was right. In Lou Reed. That was a bit of a stab in the dark there. 83. Bit of shoulder circling there for Martin. That is the shoulder that was agitated about 10 months ago when playing in the live league. 60. Playing from his lounge, of course, back then. With a lovely picture of Eric Bristow on the wall in the background. We will look back at those days of the 2020 Live League with fond memories. People's different playing settings. Diogo Portella's cat. Martin Adams' picture of Eric Bristow. My vintage golf clubs in the background. And Fallon Sherrick constantly being interrupted by the postman. And the ice cream truck. To get down to 161, he needs that 60. 140, right Begging to be hit with that third dart. Was such a lovely lie. Got to get something here. 59. Martin, you require one. Not the best situation here for Robert. What can he leave? He wants to leave 24. 100. Oh, and he gets just that thing. Robert, you require 96. Now, can Robert get out of jail? Might have to go double 18 here. Double top. Game Absolutely on sublime. Robert just Thornton. a cling on to Martin Adams there. All he could do. Sitting on double 12 for a 3-1 lead is watch, stare, and believe as Robert Thornton equalizes at 2-2. Two -two. This one is Let's far from done. Martin to throw first. Game on. Well, I've been privileged to bring you many very good days 59. of Online Darts Live League over the last 10 weeks or so. Chris Mason would say the same. But I can absolutely, without doubt, say that this has been the most impressive. Not just because of the high averages we've seen, some of the big outs, but the quality of some of the encounters. 42. To pick the best match of the day, 
I'd rather not. Because I'm pretty certain we're going to get more tomorrow. We might even get it with the last match of the day in Burness versus Burnett. Or even this one. This one's far from done, like I said, in that short interval between legs four and five. 140. But isn't it great to see Wolfie and Thornton and all these other guys playing so well? 100. We are going up a level in phase two. Make no mistake. If you come to play in this and you haven't got an A minus game or a B plus game, you're going to get absolutely butchered. Doesn't get the treble 17 for Bull. 41. Martin, you require one. And again, for the second time in this match, he just doesn't leave anything really small from something like 1 2 1, but. Hang about! Oh, Wolfie nearly gets it! And Thornton has been warned, and he has to take a breath before he goes for the 20 segment. Double 10. Cost him earlier. And costs him again. Martin, you require 20. Ironically, it's Adams who has 10s. But can't take it for 3-2. He can't take double 5, though. He tilts his head to the left as if to say, OK, I'll take that opportunity. It is a fabulous opportunity. He has taken it. 3-2 up. One leg away from the perfect day. Can Thornton do something about it? Game on. Just get the feeling that Thornton is struggling just a little bit with his rhythm as the day gets older. Earlier on, he was immensely focused. His rhythm was really good, but it has just been lost a little bit. And maybe that's why he has missed key shots at double 10 in this match. 82. I wouldn't be surprised if there were some edgy darts at the end of this campaign today. 83. Played some days last year in the live league where everybody was playing well. Playing against the likes of Mark Webster and Scott Mitchell. And the likes of Martin Adams and Jason Askew. Well, Adams is sprinting towards the line. He's had a barrel full of 180s today. He's averaging 99 in this match. A marked improvement on the 86 that he needed to beat Richie Burnett in match 12. He's got six from here. And that means he needs another 60. There it is to leave double 18 for the match. He's only one dart away from 10 points. And that would create... A guaranteed four-point gap to his next challenger going into tomorrow. Double nine. Game Didn't even think about match. splitting it. He Martin could have Adams. easily hit the two or the ten, something like that, to finish things up in the next visit. But he chose to go for that double nine. He has won ten points out of ten today. He may not have had the best match of the day, but he has been the most consistent player overall. An average of 100.98, as you can see. Really good on the doubles, around about that 45% mark. He has just been sublime. He takes a rest. We'll see more of him tomorrow. But it's Burness versus Burnett in the final match of the day.
Match number 15 just about to commence and what a fantastic day we've had. Well, these two have met before in an online Darts Live League match and we'll get more into that in a second. But, Benes and Burnett, both on four points. Slightly different in the leg difference. Burnett of Wales on minus one. Benes of Northern Ireland on plus one. So whoever wins this match will finish the day on six points and will be positioned in second place in the Group A table going into tomorrow. So Martin Adams does have that guaranteed four-point gap to his next challenger when we commence tomorrow morning again at 9.30 a.m. British time. But Bernese, who we have not seen since game 11 the against game James Richardson, Kevin to throw first. will be back at the board game thinking he is Mr. Invincible after averaging 117.2 in that previous game. I think it's fair to say that that is the best that anybody has seen of Kevin Bernese. What is that going to do for his confidence? Not just for this match, 100. but for future matches. To say to yourself that you've averaged 117 in a match. 100. Well, the day is done for Richardson, for Monk, for Adams and for Thornton. They will make their way back to their accommodation. 100. And think about their chances for tomorrow. But Adams, Mr. Perfect. 10 points from 10. 60. It is the ideal start for Martin, but like I said 100. a little bit earlier in the coverage, having a great Monday is no guarantee of success. And just because you can win oh, Group A, that's no guarantee of winning the week. We've seen that with Aaron Monk. We've seen it with Robert Thornton. Neither of them have gone on to win the weekly title after winning Group A. Forty-five. This one has started a little bit slower than some of the matches we've seen. But maybe we've had our quarter of thrillers today. Or is there one more extra piece of garlic to put in the melting pot? Possible. Double 18. I have to admit, I fully expected that to be hit as soon as that second 60 was planted in the lipstick. Double 18 for Benes. 58. He misses by a very Richie similar margin. 18. We've just seen this hit by Adams. And we've just Game seen it hit by Burnett. Leg, Richie Burnett. Let me just emphasise that was Burnett that hit that double nine. I've already slipped up once today saying Burnett instead of Burnett. But maybe I should just call him Richie and call the other guy Kevin. Well, Richie's 1-0 up. Richie to throw first. Game on. There is a saying in sport, whether it's an individual sport like this or a team sport, you're always looking for the W. Well, if you're looking for a W, 100. it's on Richie's shirt. There was a time, it wasn't even that long ago, that Raymond van Barneveld said that when he was wearing shirts with different colours, they would impart different emotions in him. Well, I always think that if you have a shirt that you wear that you win in, 85. make that your colour. Works for Dave Chisnell. You don't see many other players wing yellow. 100. You can just imagine what the, the swatch colours would be in association with different players. I think black Six. would have to be Alan Glazier. Because he always used to wear black. Red would be Eric Bristow. Yellow, Dave Chisnell. 
There's oh, a no. Michael Van Gerwen it's green, of course, a certain shade of green. I think white would have to be Steve Beaton. I think he's the only dark player that I've seen who makes white oh, look no. good because of his tan, of course, and sometimes because of his hair. Peter Wright could have his own swatch book. Easy he uses that many colours on his equipment, Richie, shoes and clothing. But this shade of green on Richie Burnett, is it going to bear fruit? Well, it's not going to be that 156, which he's had two cracks at now. Kevin, you require 96. Shovel 19. Doesn't get a shot at double 18. And Richie is very close to a 2 0 lead here. 64. Richie requires 16. Double 8 to consolidate that break that he got in the first leg. Game That's exactly what he's done. He really does want to have the opportunity tomorrow to chase down Wolfie Adams. He will have the opportunity to play him twice over the next couple of days, but to stay in contention, you get the feeling that a win here is a must. Game on. You don't want to be six points behind Martin Adams. 134. I know you've got 10 games left. And he's got 10 games left. And other players have too. But you've got to try and stay in touch. I have to be honest. Before this game... Well, before this... Batch of games began this morning. I didn't think anybody would win today's table by four points. One I thought it would be closer than that. 80. Because the likes of Benes, the likes of Burnett, Thornton, Monk and Richardson... I thought they would share these points out evenly. 100. But there have been times today, Vanessa especially, unplayable. 130. And he's having one of those legs. Well, he looks at that treble, and it's about the size of Kazakhstan. Easy one. You don't get that joke, it's a very large country. 52, 52 then, for an 11 data. Absolutely sublime. That is the best leg we've seen today. Other people have had 11 daughters, and we had a chance of a 10 with Robert Thornton. He didn't get that one, but that 11 just gets Burness well, back in here with a bit of a sniff into leg four now. Game on. There's one thing 43. that you cannot buy in this game. It's something is just not tangible. But it is something that Richie Burnett has. 134. Popularity. The feeling of the darts community when he played at the Winter Series last year. When he was put on the stream board hey, for a purpose. Because everybody wanted to watch him. I'm sure there are people watching this match right now purely... Because they're a Richie Burnett fan. I am one of them. Has he made mistakes in the past? Yes. Just adds a little bit of extra to his story. That doesn't detract away from Easy one. the person he is, the talent he has. And he has an immense following out there in the data sphere. Easy one. especially in the valleys. An area of the United Kingdom that is blessed with so many great players. We've seen Barry Bates in the online Darts Live League, of course. We've seen Wayne Warren. 59. We've seen Jamie Lewis. We've seen Mike Warburton as well of Wales. Can you change Richie's last score to 140? I think there is a correction due on Richie's score. And it's good of him to just realise that he scored 140 and 
instead of something else. Do you require 156? Because 156 is the number of this game. That was his third chance at it. It's almost like he's trying to get a 156 in this match. 132. At 18 from Baness. Denies him the chance of the 132. And in most scenarios from here, the prowling Bennett in the background there 87. Richie will convert 56. this 56 for 3 1. Tops. 10's big shot. 46. It has been pulled Evan inside by a good 45. three quarters of an inch. And Baness, who should have been on a double here, missed a big single. But he hasn't missed the tops, and it's 2-2 in this match. I fully expected this one to go the distance. All seven legs are possible, but if someone is going to share a brilliant, brilliant performance, they might have to kick on from here. Leg, it's Kevin to throw first. Game on. It's been good so far. But maybe somebody just needs to press the accelerator a little bit here. It could be Baness, who was robbed of a 180 there via a very nasty flight collision. But it could be Richie Burnett, who maxes. 91 average for Richie, 95 for Kevin. And astonishingly, there's only been two maximums in this match. It's just looked better than that. Fifty-eight. Well, before we close today's program, I want to leave you guys, our regular viewers, with a question. And that is... And it's got to be players, of course, outside of tour card status. Who do you want to see play in the Online Darts no, Live League in Phase 2? Who do you want to see? Which new faces would you like to see? You might have some of the usual suspects to come back. But who do you want to see? Let me know. If you're quick with your answer, you might get it read out on the coverage today. But this program is coming to a very swift climax because double eight for Baness to get to 3 2. He's missed. Richie, you require 104. To break back. Well, it's tops, tops. After what we've seen today, I wouldn't be shocked to see this. This would be exhibition stuff. <laughs> so close. That would have been very Aaron Monk behaviour. But that's very conventional behaviour as Kevin Baness. Plants a 16 data, gets himself into the lead at three legs to two. And he is only one leg away from being the closest challenger to Martin Adams at the top of the table. Burnett Six needs to win Richie two to perfect from first. here. Game on. Easy two. I think the moment of the day was definitely that big average from Baness of 117. The astonishing thing is, is that's not the best average we've seen. It is the second best average we've seen. By quite some distance. But we've seen a 170 from James Richardson in his only win of the day. Over Aaron Monk, where he himself 97. averaged 107.59. We've seen a plethora of ton plus averages today. I think more than any other day we've had. We'll have to double check that. 100. Oh, there's the old flamingo celebration from Richie Burnett. If you pose like a flamingo a little bit more like that, Peter Manley's going to want to buy you, Richie. 
90, so. A bit of an inside joke that Peter Manley collects flamingos. Not the real ones. Before anybody tweets me. Fifty-six. Peter Manley once bought a flamingo from a Chinese restaurant in Germany. That's a true story. One hundred and twenty-three. Great leave from Bernice. He's one hundred and twenty-four away from ending the day with a sixty percent yield on points. And he's beating himself up massively here as Richie. He's got to go 19s. 96. He's definitely not out of this match yet. He just needs a little bit of hope here. One slack dart from Bernays. Will it come? It might not. 99. There is the miss that Richie required. Richie require 82. If he converts this 82, we are going to the hill in the last match of the day. 91. And that leaves 71. Treble 13, perhaps. 42. Doesn't get a shot. Add a double from 82, and that is an error. Kevin, you require 25. To win 4-2. And that's what he does. Match. Kevin, Kevin Burness has had an excellent end to his campaign today. He worked so hard earlier on just to try and get close to getting some points. But with excellent play and a couple of misses from his opponents, he's managed to get some more points there. As you can see, 93.35 average and 44% on his doubles. It's a steady performance to finish things up. That brings to a close our play for today with the Online Darts Live League. It's been an absolutely sensational Monday. I have really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. We will be back tomorrow from 9.30 a.m. British time on the Online Darts YouTube channel and via the streaming services of your favourite bookmakers. So have a fantastic night. Enjoy the Premier League tonight. Enjoy the pressure around those players. I'll be back tomorrow. Will you? I hope so. This is The Asset signing out for now. See you tomorrow.